From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is NETV and NETV Digital Television, celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska. This program is made possible by viewers like you, who are members of NPTV. Omaha Creighton Prep head coach Tom Jaworski has developed a dangerous passing attack with quarterback Dan Gorski and Husker tight end recruit Zach Potter. Miller North head coach Fred Petito feels his Mustangs are wearing teams down as linebacker Paul Homer has over 160 tackles. The rematch for the Class A title is next. Oh, nice move. A roar of fans, a lot to cheer about. Showing that tremendous speed going down that far sideline. Really good for him today, kind of a high, high loper. And ETB Sports, Nebraska's home for sports, is live from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska for the 2004 Nebraska State High School Football Championships. Tonight, in the Class A title game, it's the Creighton Prep Junior Jays and the Miller North Mustangs. Hi again, everybody. I'm Kevin Kugler along with Adrian Fiala. Glad to have you with us tonight for a much-anticipated rematch in Class A between Creighton Prep and Miller North. Different paths to get here for Creighton Prep, an 11-1 and season for Miller North. They went 3-6 and six in the regular year and then got red hot during the playoffs. Here they are, a chance to defend their Class A state championship. Aid Creighton Prep, one thing you can say about them is they know what to do when they get to the state tournament. Seems like they're here every year. <laughs> Absolutely, Kevin. They'll be, if they win tonight, it'll be their ninth state championship. That will be a state record if they get it done here tonight. The hallmark of Creighton Prep football, running the football. They're doing that, but head coach Tom Dworski says, you know, we have better balance and probably has had a long time at Creighton Prep, so they'll throw the ball very well also here tonight. On defense, they have a number one rated defense in the state led by Zach Potter. Nebraska scholarship recruit. He will be a force on defense. You know, Miller North has been mistake prone early in the year. They have solved those problems. They're playing great football, making plays. Zach Potter be challenged tonight along with the rest of the prep defense. Also with us tonight is Matt Davison. And Matt, when you talk about Miller North football, what you see is what you get. That's right, Kevin. We're going to see from Fred Petito and the Miller North Mustangs tonight a double tight end set on nearly every single play. The flex bone power offense led by Robbie Knight. This is their third straight state title game, Kevin, so they're going to try to do a repeat tonight. And Robbie Knight, so far, perfect as a starter. He's 3-0. and Larry Putney is with us down on the sidelines. Larry? Well, it's been a quarterback carousel for Miller North this season. They started out uh, at quarterback with uh, Jeff Tarpinian. Tarpinian was injured in the sixth game, hurt his shoulder, so in comes a sophomore, Nick Argyle. He goes all the way to the playoffs. Tarpinian comes back, gets re-injured. Argyle comes back. Then before the next playoff game, he goes down with pneumonia. Enter Robbie Knight, who, as you said, is getting his fourth start tonight, but remember, he led him to the state championship last year. He's kind of the lucky rabbit's foot for Millard North when it comes to state championship games. Robbie Knight has been the guy and started last year, won Fred Petito his first state championship. Looking for number two here tonight. Let's go to our public address announcer, Chris Lofgren, to introduce you to the players in tonight's Class A state championship. On behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association, its member schools, and U.S. Bank, welcome to the 2004 NSAA State High School Football Championship Final. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the players competing in the Class A State Football Championship Final. First, the visiting team, the Junior Jays of Omaha Creighton Prep High School. Number nine, Michael Stillman. Number 15, Daniel Giorski. Number 20, Michael McClay. Number 23, Mike Waring. Number 28, Peter Nobleman. Number 33, Andy Keith. Number 35, Cameron LaFur. Number 53, 53, Craig Perrin. Craig Perrin. Number, 65, Number 65, Michael Brown. Brown. Number 68, 68 Greg, Greg Williams. Williams. Number, 72, Number 72, Jake McClay. Number 77, Number 77 Joel, Peterson. Joel Peterson. Number 78, 78 Jeffrey, Jeffrey McGill. McGill. Number 80, 80 Anthony, Anthony Turk. Turk. 
Number 82, Daniel Glassman. Number 83, David Carlisle. Number 87, Zachary Potter. Head coach, Tom Jaworski. And the rest of the Junior Jays. Creighton Prep at 11 and 1 this year. Their only loss at Omaha West Side in week number three of the season. This is a rematch of the second game of the year in the Class A schedule. Creighton Prep beat Miller North 21-13. Since that time, though, Creighton Prep has really rolled, beating everyone they've faced on their schedule. It's a good, good football team. And Creighton Prep feels like this is the year they add that state championship number nine. They want to try to get back, uh, get it back, Kevin. Uh, they remember what happened last year. Is Tom Jaworski, as you saw a moment ago, said, you know, it doesn't bother him, but it bothers the kids a lot. They have that score written on everything they can to write it on. Tom Jaworski, 33 years in high school coaching, the winningest coach in uh, high school state history here in Nebraska. Congratulations, Tom. That, that is quite a feat. 26 times in the playoffs, eight state champions, six times a runner-up. Outstanding. Back to our public address announcer, Chris Lofgren. The champs are going to defend their title, and he'll introduce you to Miller North. Now for the home team, the Mustangs of Millard North High School. Number five, Robert Knight. Number seven, Nathan Sell. Number 10, Nathan Hiller. Number 11, Nicholas Argyle. Number 21, Matthew Hanson. Number 22, James Conway. Number 25, Paul Homer. Number 34, Jacob Barron. Number 42, DJ Coleman. Number 43, Kyle Crum. Number 49, David Thorson. Number 55, Mitchell Smullen. Number 57, Grant Hayek. Number 58, Sean McArdle. Number 59, Jared Barrett. Number 65, Danny Wages. Number 69, Corey Sitilla. Number 74, John Colby. Number 76, Nate Fair. Number 78, Adam Nelson. Number 89, Andrew Dennis. Number 98, Jacob Wolf. Head coach for the Mustangs, Fred Petito. And the rest of the Mustangs. It was not an easy road to this state championship for the defending Class A state champs. They finished their regular season at three and six. They had to play Millard West, Bellevue West, and Omaha West Side to get here. And they got here. Three straight wins over three of the best teams in the state, Millard West, Bellevue West and Omaha West Side. Larry Putney was in the Creighton Prep locker room. He'll tell us what was going on in there. Are they fired up, Larry? Very calm and confident, uh, Kevin. Tom Jaworski just took a minute to really kind of go over things and briefly say, just keep your head, don't get started too early, that kind of thing. And then Jake McGlade, the senior captain, pulled everybody in, and then the place got hopping a little bit. It reminded the players what happened the last time they were here. And all he needed to say was 38 to seven, and everybody was ready to go. And Fred Petito, uh, again, this young, this guy, you talk about great coaches in Nebraska, 202 career wins for Fred Petito. And he, every year, year in and year out, he has his team ready to go in the playoffs 12 times in his career, uh, Kevin. And he, he told his guys, okay, we had a tough year this year, but we can go undefeated in November. And that's what's happened. And they have really turned things around. You said at the top of the show, they made a lot of mistakes early in the, in the season because of youth and inexperience. That youth and that experience has been seasoned now by their game throughout the year, and they are ready to go. They've been making plays in the playoffs. They'll make plays again here tonight. Has been a fun road to the state championship, and when you talk about that 6-6 six and six record, Matt, it's a little bit deceiving. It's not like Millard North was getting blown out. They lost by 6, they lost by 8, they lost by 1, by 5, by 12, and by 8. They were in the game. Mistakes were hurting them throughout the season. That's right. That's what Coach Petito said. You know, mistakes have hurt them, and lately when they've been winning, they haven't been making those same mistakes, and that's why they're winning. Also, Kevin, they probably played the most difficult schedule in all of Class A. So they played a lot of tough games, and all that experience against those great teams that they played this season 
will help them tonight. They're playing a great team in Creighton Prep, but all that experience, so many underclassmen playing for this Miller North team. They're not freshmen, sophomores, juniors anymore. This is the 13th game of the year, so there's no more making excuses for being young. Right now it's the state finals. Time to get the job done. And also remember, guys, that the losses that they had to some of those teams, Millard West, Bellevue West, Omaha West Side, they played them again in the playoffs, and they beat every one of those teams. If they beat Creighton Prep tonight, it'll be rematch number four that they win. Well, last night we had rain, but a much nicer night in the weather department tonight. 48 degrees, cloudy skies, a wind west-northwest at 15 miles per hour, 77% humidity. Actually, it's a very pleasant night. The wind a little crisp, but not too bad down there on the field. The officials tonight, as assigned by the NSAA, Referee is Marcus Wacker, the umpire Scott Wacker, Randy Hagedorn, the linesman, Brian Soulier is the line judge, and Jeff Pasold is the back judge. As we get the teams out here to the middle of the field at Memorial Stadium, Tom Osborne Field for the coin flip. And we'll see who ends up with the football first to get this Class A state championship started. And let's listen in for the coin flip as the teams exchange pleasantries. <laughs> Okay, fellas, we'll have the flip of the coin. Creighton Prep, you're the visiting team. Your call will be? Tails. Tails is your call. We'll let it hit the turf. And Tails it is. What? It's a head, Miller North, you've won this time. What a fur. Okay, your choice is then to... Okay, turn your backs to the goals that you're going to defend, gentlemen. Miller North wins the toss. They have chosen to defer. We'll see the Junior Jays of Creighton Prep on offense. The kickoff of the Class A state championship game is next. Programming is provided in part by Education Quest Foundation. For over 15 years, Education Quest has offered free college planning services. These services include scholarship searches, student loan information, college selection, and help with completing financial aid application. Education Quest is located in Kearney, Lincoln, and Omaha. Appointments are available at 800-666-3721. Brian LGH West is bringing advanced neuroscience technology to Nebraska, offering the state's first gamma knife radio surgery to non-invasively treat brain tumors and severe facial pain, and working with Nebraska's only physician specially trained in coiling for brain aneurysms. Just two examples of our commitment to neuroscience care for Nebraskans and our neighbors. Brian LGH, the first name in healthcare. Programming on NETV is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. Soy biodiesel is a soy-based, clean-burning, renewable fuel that can be blended with petroleum diesel to help reduce America's dependence on foreign oil. Soy biodiesel, making a difference for soybean farmers and you. The best in high school and college sports is on NETV. Six, Pearson with the lead, 13 to nothing. She is just on fire here. She did have a band in class C. That From volleyball to basketball, football to hockey, NETV is Nebraska's home for sports. Celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska, this is NETV and NETV Digital Television, a service of Nebraska Educational Telecommunications. The 2004 Nebraska State High School Football Championships are being carried live over the internet, so if you have friends or family who don't have access to any TV, have them log on to mynptv.org, click sports, and follow the prompts to State High School Football. NETV is Nebraska's home for sports. Well, it's an easy locator map tonight to show you where they're located. Cross town, Creighton Prep, Miller North, in the Omaha metro area, an easy shot down I-80 to get here tonight to Memorial Stadium. Here's the path they took to get to this state championship. Creighton Prep and Miller North. Miller North with a three-point win over Bellevue West, a one-point win over Omaha Westside. Both come from behind wins. Creighton Prep blew out North Platte on the road and defeated Kearney. That got him here to this state championship matchup. And we are just about ready to go in this one as the two teams line up to kick it off. 
For Miller North, ready to kick is Matthew Clark. You can see out there at the coin flip, Kevin, these guys, some of them know each other. They go out there and they're kind of laughing, shaking hands, getting ready for a battle out there. But it's good to see those guys having fun before the game. And that will end in about four seconds as they'll get ready to kick that off. Friendships, you leave them on the sidelines as Clark gets ready to kick it away for Millard North. Back deep to return for Creighton Prep. We are underway. It's a short kick and a fair catch called for and made at the 30-yard line, and that's where Creighton Prep will start. Good heads-up play by Thomas Muleman to call for the fair catch. Let's take a look at the offense for Creighton Prep, the Junior Jays with Dan Gorski, Ryan Fisichero, Andy Keith, David Carlisle, Tony Turpin, Zach Potter, the backs and receivers. Offensive line, Joel Peterson, Mike Brown, Craig Parent, Jake McGlade, and Jeff McGill will set the starters for Millard North in just a moment. First down and 10 from the 30-yard line. Gorski under center. And the give, straight ahead run, and a hole to run through for Mark Waring to midfield, and Waring out of bounds in Millard North territory at the 48-yard line. Nate Hiller rode him out. And let's take a look at the Millard North Mustang defense. Jake Behrens, Adam Nelson, Danny Wages, and Jake Wolf on the defensive line. Kyle Crump, Paul Homer, Mitch Smolin, Robbie Knight, Jimmy Conway, Nick Argyle, and Nate Hiller, the man that made the tackle, are the backs and linebackers for Millard North. First down and 10, a good start for Waring and Creighton Prep. Now Waring in motion out of the backfield on first down and 10 from the Millard North 48-yard line. Give straight ahead and down to the 45-yard line goes Andy Keith, wrapped up by Jacob Wolf. Kevin, that first play, tremendous box leveled down there by the right tackle and the right guards, Jake McLeod and Jeff McGill. And then on this next play, McGill, or McGlay that is, pulls around from his guard spot around the center. Craig Parent leads the block up inside, four-yard gain. Second down, seven from the 45-yard line. Just underway in the Class A state championship. Waring gets the carry. Big hole again up the middle. Waring into the secondary. Inside the 30 to the 29. Another first down for Creighton Prep. And Mark Waring is finding some huge holes to run through. This time they go left side over Michael Brown. Between Brown and Parent, look at this hole right here. Tremendous blocking up front. Matt, you love holes like that, don't you? Uh, I never ran through the line, Adrian. You never knew what to do there. <laughs> no, I, you did I a stayed few times away from those school. big guys. Yeah, I did a few yeah, times yeah. in high school. I never saw a hole that big. The give to Waring again. Sheds one tackle. He will not get away, however, from Paul Homer. Not many have this year as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Homer with his 170th tackle this season right on that play. 6'1", 215. He's only a junior, but he's the leader of that defense, making plays all over the field. He fills the hole well in the middle of the line there, guys, but he can also run sideline to sideline. He has the speed to make the play on the corner. Yeah, 20 tackles against Westside in the uh, semis. Makes a lot of plays, you said that. Second and 10 from the Mustang 29-yard line. Waring gets the carry again. Oh, my, what a pop at the 30-yard line. Big hit from Jake Behrens. A loss of one on the play. It's third and 11. Remember that hit. Making a stop. He really collapsed the, side, the left side of that line in there. Tom Jaworski, earlier in the night, we talked with him about how he decides what running backs to put it in what situations. Well, it's kind of evolved because of injuries. Early on in the season, Mike McClay was not playing. He was injured. Uh, Ryan Fitzgerald's a starter, and Mark Waring starting free safety. He was going to get playing time at running back. And then uh, Mike got hurt. Uh, Ryan got hurt. Mark came in the ball game. He has been playing just lights out. Uh, Ryan's back. He uh, brings speed and agility to what we're doing. And uh, McClay's just tough, and he's a tough inside runner, good blocker. So. They each bring a little bit uh, different style of uh, runner. I think Mark Waring's a very good zone runner. Obviously, Ryan when he gets outside, he's gone. Uh, and McClay, just, he's just tough. Matt Hansen with the tackle on that third down play for Millard North, keeping Zach Potter away from the first down sticks. It's fourth and five from the 24-yard line. We're going to see a field goal attempt. Mike Stillmock, who has hit a 44-yarder this year, will line up for a 41-yard attempt on the far side hash. And it looks like a delay of game is going to be called. So that may change everything. It is a delay of game against Creighton Prep, and that'll cost them five. Yeah, it'll turn up. A 41-yarder, Kevin, into uh, up a 46-yarder. Like you said, he made 44 earlier. Go from there with it. There is a little breeze up there, guys, and 
And it'll, this one will be into the wind a little bit. I don't know if they're going to try to kick it or not. They're going to punt it now. Looks like yeah. Stillmock has left the field. And they'll bring on the punt team on fourth and ten from the 29-yard line. What little breeze is blowing is kind of going out of the northwest, cutting across the field. Probably, Matt, you're down there. Nebraska games, that wind just likes to swirl once yeah, it, it comes once into it the uh, into, stadium. Yep. Yeah, once it gets down there, it just swirls you around. You see, see the flags on top of the, uh, the poles there. The Fourth down and ten. They're not going to punt. They're going to go. Gorski with all kinds of time. Fires it out. Catch is made. Potter's got it right at the sticks. And we'll see if he has the first down. Zach Potter, the all-state, super-state tight end, the Nebraska recruit, takes it right to the first down marker, and it's going to be close. What a great job on coverage that time. Nate Hiller over there on the coverage, but Zach Potter, he levered his brick frame across the field, right across that stripe. He knew where he needed to go, and he put it right across. See, looking for that stripe. He looked there, that last, uh, that last little glance. Looks down. It's a good hit right there, but I think, yeah, move the sticks and away Creighton Prep goes again. Yeah, good hit and a good tackle. He had plenty of time to throw that time. Good job by the offensive line of Creighton Prep there. First down and 10 from the 19-yard line. The give up the middle. A little bit of a hole, but not too much. It closed quickly by Grant Hayek. The carry by Mike McClay, his first carry of the night, and a pickup of about two yards. Miller North just going to shut this down. Hayek, lead block up there. Great puck by the fullback you just saw, but... That was way out in front. Matt, you talked about the prep offensive line. They're big. Left tackle, 243. Left guard, 233. Their center is 280. Right guard, Jack, uh, Jake McClay, 258. Right tackle, Jeff McGill, 284. Second Hogs eight. up front, huh? No big, question. Big stuff. Toss play over the left side. McClay ahead of the 15-yard line, falls ahead to the 14. Three-yard pickup for McClay. Third down and five. Eight minutes remaining first quarter. No score here in the Class A State Championship. Watch Paul Homer here scrape to the gap, 25. Come into your picture and just trips up the ball carry on the play. Good job by Paul Homer to fill it in. Scrapes in that hole about as well as any linebacker I've seen at high school level. Third down and five for Creighton Prep. Ball at the 14-yard line of Miller North. They've gone to Potter when they've needed a big play. Play fake, Gorski to throw wide open. Did he pick it off the turf? He did not. Intended for his fullback, Andy Keith. Couldn't pull it off the field turf, and it's fourth down. And the reason the ball didn't get out there was because of the pressure coming from the that side of the defense there, the left side of the defense from Creighton Prep. He had to throw it over a couple defenders. And there you can see it might have just hit the ground, but a heck of an effort there by the fullback to go down and get it. Andy Keith almost... Picked it right off the turf. Kyle Crum on the pressure for Miller North. Uh, Matt made it tough for Gorski. Field goal attempt for Stillmock. This is a 31-yard try, and it is no good. Mike Stillmock, four for five on the year in the field goal department, comes up empty, and Creighton Prep unable to put points on the board with their first drive of the night. Well, Victory of sorts for Miller North. What you say, guys? Uh, the way Creighton Prep started out moving to football. And then they tightened it up pretty well. A couple of crucial first downs that Prep picked up, but a miscue in the kicking game, and Miller North holds and gets the football. Yeah, it's tough not to score there, but at least you put a drive together, Adrian. You flip the field there, and you, you know that you can move the ball now against Miller North. They might have a little confidence offensively now, even though they didn't get points, points on the board. Interesting to see how this all unfolds with uh, Robbie Knight at quarterback. This is his fourth start at quarterback in his career. And he's won his first three, all in the playoffs or finals. Jake Behrens gets the carry on first down, and Mike McClay with the stop for Creighton Prep. And the offensive starters for Millard North tonight, Robbie Knight, DJ Coleman, Jake Behrens, Nate Sell, and then that double tight set that Matt told you about, Andrew Dennis and David Thorson. Along the offensive line, Nate Fear, Corey Shilato, Jared Barrick, Grant Hayek, and John Colby along the offensive line. Second down and six from the 24-yard line. Robbie Knight, the senior, won a state championship a year ago. DJ Coleman with the carry, and Coleman out to the 27-yard line. Four yards, close to four yards on the play. Let's look at the defense for Creighton Prep, the Junior Jays. Zach Potter, Jake McClade, Cameron LaFleur, Dan Glassman, and Greg Williams along the defensive line. The backs and linebackers, David Carlisle, Andy Keith, Mike McClay, Tony Turp, Pete Dobelman, and Mark Waring the free safety for Creighton Prep. Third down three, ball at the 27-yard line. 
Knight on the give straight ahead to Barron's and Barron's working hard to get the first down. He's got it across the 30 near the 32. Good gain for Jake Barron's and a first down for Millard North. Looking for that daylight out there and he just he got the ball deep enough in the backfield Matt, that he could search for the crease and he saw it to the left. I think the play really designed to maybe go a little bit further to the right but he saw the crease to the left and took it over and got the first down. This offense makes a defense really not focus on one guy. You can't because they can give it to the fullback, give it to the eye back, the quarterback can keep it. It's really tough to defend. First down and 10 from the 32. Coleman gets the carry. Good block out front. Coleman, a good gain out near the 39-yard line. D.J. Coleman, the sophomore starter, with a good gain on first down. Earlier today, Fred Petito talked about what Robbie Knight brings to the field as the starting quarterback. Rob brings a lot of stability because, he, you know, he's, you know, he's a three-sport ath athlete, and, and he nothing really bothers him he's been in every situation possible and you know last year you see him step in and uh he uh handled it, things real well now he didn't he's got a more of expanded role this year as you'll see tonight okay you know last year we had to kind of be a little banged up but now he's ready to roll and rob's a real talented guy you know don't don't sell him short you know you uh, he likes to give credit to the pass cues of being real athletic and rob's not too far off you know, he's not as strong as those guys but he's got you know he's got great quickness and and great just field awareness. The carry by Barron's very close to the sticks. They're going to bring in the chains to measure. Robbie Knight there headed to Kansas State on a baseball scholarship. He's a very good athlete. Maybe the fastest player on the team. He's a 4-5 guy in the 40-yard dash. So good speed. Obviously a pretty good bat. Some quick hands as he's headed to K-State to play baseball. And not a bad record at quarterback, perfect 3-0 as a starter. You like that, uh, Kevin, no doubt about it. Uh, down at K-State, he'll play center field where he'll use that great speed to roam the outfield. Also a great basketball player, point guard on the basketball team, and just a great all-around athlete. Fred Petito just loves the kid. Says he just really appreciates the stability that he brings to his football team or to any team that he plays on. Robbie Knight. 42-yard line, first down and 10. Coleman and Barons behind Knight in the eye set. Double tights on the line. The give to Barons. And Barons down at the 45 yard line. Mike McClay, Matt, fills the hole quickly and a very good tackle. Let's go downstairs. Larry Putney's down on the sidelines. Guys, one of the questions that Miller North gets a lot from people who don't see them play all the time is what's the deal with the tape around the helmet? Well, the deal is it really started in practice several years ago when some guys were having problems with their chin straps popping off. So they slapped some tape on it. Came kind of a fad. A few more players did it, and all of a sudden, it's just part of the normal uniform. Second fad. and seven, yeah. It's a fad. It's, a fad. it's gonna pass. <laughs> Second and seven from the 45-yard line. Coleman gets the carry again. Coleman across midfield. Boy, I like the way he runs. Low to the ground, a quick little burst, and another first down for Miller North. He's heading upfield, too. He's leading into it, Matt. That's right. He's tough to find back there. He's not a big guy at 146 pounds, but watch how he delivers the blow there at the end. I like he runs low. All you see coming at you is shoulder pads and thighs coming at you. Mark Waring that time had to get really low to try to make the tackle on Coleman as he comes through the hole so quick and so low. He's a back that makes forward progress standing still, and you like to see that. You're not going to throw him for a loss a whole heck of a lot. Miller North on the move here. Into prep territory at the 46-yard line. Knight on the keep, then shovels ahead to Barons, and Barons spinning ahead to the 41-yard line, but there's a flag down. It's our first flag of the night. And we'll wait and see. Our referee signals holding. Marcus Wacker will mark it off against Millard North. So first and 10 becomes first and 20 for the Mustangs. Guys, this is our fourth game we've done the last couple of days, and most of these teams run the football a lot, and we've seen pretty much on every drive some, that a team has had a holding penalty. And they yeah. put themselves in first and 20 or second and 15. They have a hard time getting a first down. We'll see if Miller North can overcome this penalty here, but it's just a drive killer when you get those holding penalties and when you're a run, running football team, it puts you in a tough position to try to get 20 yards in three plays. Miller North with some good carries tonight from Coleman, though. He's got three carries, 19 yards. Barron's four carries for 15 yards. All on the ground, 34 yards total offense tonight for Miller North. See what they can do with a first down and 20. Coleman and Barron's behind Knight 
on first down. The give to Coleman. Trying to work his way over the left side. He cannot get out of the arms of Greg Williams, the senior. Defensive end has had a great season. 50 tackles from his defensive end spot this year. Well, he just made a great play because the right guard for Miller North pulling on the play, Grant Hayek. He spun out of there, pulled from the right side, led the play left, and just barreled right into Greg Williams. Williams able to stand his ground, take on the block, and then make the tackle. That was just a tremendous play and effort by Greg Williams. Second down, 19 at the 45, 318 remaining. First quarter, no score. The Class A state championship. Coleman around the right side into prep territory down to the 47-yard line. He has a second gear, and when he hits the corner, he really kicks it in. I'm impressed with D.J. Coleman. He's a youngster that came on board. He played junior varsity all year, came on board in the, uh, in the playoffs, and here he goes. Looking for that second gear right there, Kevin, to try to get him on through the secondary. But D.J. Coleman at 5'8 and 146 pounds, a sophomore, played JV all year and really contributed well, contributed speed to the Miller North team in the playoffs. They're going to have to hurry to get this play off here with only five to go and they have to call a timeout or take another penalty here. It's going to go down. And there's the timeout called by the sideline. They didn't get out of the huddle until six was left on the play clock. And Miller North has to take a timeout. Fred Fatito will make his way out to talk with his offense. Third down, a long 11 to go. The ball close to the 48-yard line, just ahead of the 48. They need to put it all the way down to the 36 of Creighton Prep for a first down, so it's a long 11, a short 12 for Miller North. Fred Petito, his team three and six at the end of the regular season, and we asked him earlier if he thought at three and six if his team would be here to defend his state championship. Game nine, we weren't very good. We really, we weren't. Uh, we were pretty good all year. We just were, we, we knew why we weren't being successful. And, uh, you know, we didn't get our heads down. All we did was try to solve everything. There's no use you know, uh, being big babies about it. And we knew we had to win a couple games. And then once game nine was over, um, no, no one's pointing fingers. All we did was go to work. And we, we, we seen the draws. We said, this is going to be difficult, but it's not going to be impossible. And then I tell you what, when Jeff Tarpanian came back for the first playoff game, I mean, the whole week, our heads were up. It just brought life to our football team. And he only played two series. But we had so much energy from him being out there that when our soft came in, Nick Argon broke a 50-yard run immediately. And I don't know if they gained another first down the rest of the night. And that was a good, good, solid team we beat. I mean, so it went from there. And then, of course, Andy Keith forcing the fumble and Creighton Prep recovering on the play. They ran the option aid, and the fumble forced by Keith recovered on the play for Creighton Prep by Greg Williams. D.J. Coleman here had problems getting a hold of the ball, but look at that, Keith. He just strips the football right away at 6'2", 220 pounds, coming full force. And he took Coleman on the sophomore and just ripped it right out of his arms. And the Blue Jays, uh, a big, big break right here at midfield. It's a great shot showing that strip as well. First down and 10. Toss play to Waring. Waring cuts it back across midfield to the 49 of Millard North. Four yards on first down for Mark Waring, who's now up to 42 yards rushing on just five carries. Very effective play there. Just a nice pitch play. Get a couple lead blockers out there and run tough. Both teams tonight, you know, we're going to pound that football. Defensively, you're going to have to fill your holes and be tough in there. A lot of helmet shoulder pad popping going on right now. Double tight set now for Creighton Prep. We've seen this from Miller North all night. The give up the middle. This is Ryan Fisichero, and Fisichero with a first down to the Miller North 41. First carry of the night for Creighton Prep's third running back we've seen. Miller North defensive line, a little bit of, see the technique there, the two uh, defensive tackles slanting in, going down. They're thinking the play's coming right up the gut. It didn't, it went way to the left side. And Creighton Prep capitalizes on that slant and gets it upfield for the first down. Ryan Fisichero missed a month and a half with an ankle sprain against Westside. They lost that game, by the way. He is back now and feeling pretty good. Up the middle, big hole for Andy Keith into the secondary. Andy Keith with one man to beat for the touchdown, and he will not be beat. It's a score. Touchdown, Creighton Prep. The Junior Jays lead. Quick opener right up the gut, right between McGlade and Parent for Creighton Prep, the center and the uh, right guard. Two of the biggest guys on the field. Craig Parent at 280, Jake McGlade at 258. And Keith was not to be denied. 
Miller North player Nate Hiller on giving chase towards the end there, but that wasn't going to happen. Keith had a full head of steam, but Hiller was just going to go long for the ride, guys. Still mock the extra point. It is good, and with a minute 25 remaining in this first quarter, Creighton Prep with a 7-0 lead on a touchdown run, 41 yards for Andy Keith. 6'2", 220 pounds. You can see the speed here as he breaks through the line. A couple good blocks. He sees the opening, turns it on. Jake Nate McGlade. Hiller couldn't run him down. Jake McGlade. I tell you, that was just a, that block you saw right to begin to play. That was McGlade, and he just cleared out the path. Nobody there. Good, uh, good job by Keith to avoid a tackle once he got beyond the line of scrimmage. And now Hiller's going to take a, well, this is a B ticket ride right there. That's not all that spectacular. Look at the scoring drive, three plays, 53 yards. The 41-yard run by Andy Keith, who's getting some interest from UNO, KU, K-State, Missouri. No offers yet for Andy Keith, but he will be playing college football somewhere, no and, question. And Kevin, the prep defense, uh, they create the turnover, the fumble by D.J. Coleman. Prep's offense takes it over, capitalizes it, creates points off the turnover. Great job, great teamwork by both sides of the football for great prep. Tom Jaworski very happy right now. Trust me, you can't tell by the look on his face, but he's very happy right now. 7-0 lead for his Jays with a minute 25 to play first quarter. They get a short pooch kick at the 25, and they're going to stop it right there. The fair catch signal came from Kyle Crum. The punt was, or the uh, kickoff rather, was received by Jake Barons. And Barons, who didn't call for the fair catch, started to run. Once it's called, it's in effect. You see Marcus Wagner there signaling what normally is a delay of game uh, infraction. But once that fair catch is signaled by your team, it's a, it's a fair catch situation is on. So you have to you have to go ahead and catch the ball or try to catch the ball and stop. You can't advance. That kickoff causes problems for for your return team there. I mean, you don't know if how fast the guys are coming in front of you. You're watching the football up in the air, and you don't know whether to call a fair catch or not. Do you well, have time to return it? And, and so. Matt, it's, those guys up front there aren't usually used to that sort of thing either. They're uh, they're the up guys, and they're not really used to the handling the football that much. Coleman gets the ball on first down, and a big hit. Ball popped free at the end. It was down, though. Mike McClay with the tackle. Coleman, who fumbled on his last carry, nearly coughed it up again. DJ's a sophomore, and as I said, he only came up uh, after playing all year. JV came up in the playoffs and played there, and man, that's a tremendous hit right there by McClay. Good call by the officials, too. His yeah. knee was down. He better not cough it up again, or he'll find himself over by Coach Petito. I'll guarantee you that. Coleman, very talented young man. They want to see him succeed here at Miller North. The give to Barons and Barons pulling his way across the 30, about two yards shy of the first down. Third down and short coming up for Miller North. A 7-0 lead for Creighton Prep in this late first quarter in the Class A State Championship. Tom seemed remarkably under control over there. Uh, Jerry Murtaugh right behind him was <laughs> After his defense, <laughs> my old, at the mouth. Is my that what you want to say? <laughs> my old teammate down there, Jerry, he, he gets after it still. On third down and short, Barron's looking for some running room, looking for that first down, and I don't know. It's very, very close. Judging by where they ran in at the hash at the 32-yard line, I think he's got the first down. Yeah, just, just by the depends. nose of the ball, I think he's got it. It's right on the hash mark there. They're going to take a gander with the sticks. Marcus Wacker will signal to bring the chains in. Got right to the hash at the 32, and that's exactly where the strip is. Now, the strip on the sidelines is not the official marking, but we'll see as they pull the chains. I think he's got it. And he does. Indeed. By about a football and a, about a half a football. Been a, been a lot of close calls the last two days, I want to tell you. And it's bugging me that Davison's getting most of them right. That's, I mean, that's just wrong. It's the eyes of a wide receiver. <laughs> oh, boy. See the ball. Folks, you're only getting that on air. Imagine what it's been like off air with Matt all weekend. I mean, it's Oh, it's, it's been, been a pleasure being up here with you two guys, let me tell you. <laughs>
this oh, many uh, hours. Old eagle eye over here to our left. <laughs> the, the quarter mercifully comes to an end for us anyway. We'll step aside and take a timeout at the end of one of the Class A state championship game. It's great prep seven and Miller North nothing. Central Time on NETV. Familiar faces. New faces. Great job accelerating into the ball. Quick snap on it. But the same power and passion. Sally Amua serving. Serve is in. Nebraska women's volleyball on NETV Sports. A winning combination. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is NETV and NETV Digital Television, celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska. NETV sports coverage of the 2004 Nebraska State High School Football Championships are brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us by Brian LGH Medical Center, the first name in healthcare. By the Nebraska Soybean Board, promoting soy biodiesel fuel, clean burning and renewable, making a difference for soybean farmers and you. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, community grants and college planning services. Second quarter about to begin. First down and 10 from the 32-yard line for the Mustangs of Millard North. We'll check the size of that offensive line for Millard North after this play, Kevin. Barons gets the carry. Flag is down, and Barons is down out near the 42-yard line, but the flag came down very quickly. And we'll look at it thrown in the general area of a hold, and we'll see if that is indeed the call, and it is holding against Millard North. Size contributed to that play. Good blocking on the right-hand side over there, but you take a look at Millard North's offensive line. Left tackle, Nate Fear, 6'6", 280. Their left guard, Corey Shalito, 6'1", 240. Their center, Jared Barrick, 6'4", 265. Their right guard, Grant Hayek, 6'2", 275. And John Kolb, their right tackle, 6'5", and 285. You know what, Matt, that sounds like a college line to me. It's uh, almost, uh, most collegiate lines aren't that big. Yeah, that's Incredible. a big offensive line. And the backup. Adrian, so they shouldn't have to hold. That's the point. Well. And this is their second <laughs> holding call of the night. And Fred Petito over there doesn't like it. And he was on the official a little bit there, too. But, you know, if you're that big, just get a good push and let your running backs find a gap and shoot up field. First down at 19 from the 23. Barons gets the carry again. And Jake Barons across the 30 and back near the original line of scrimmage at the 32 yard line. The senior, Jake Barons, a three star prospect rated in the Rivals recruiting database. Going to decide between offers from Colorado and Stanford for his college career. He is one of the best fullbacks in the country, rated the 12th best fullback in the country. And wherever he goes, he's got a great GPA, a 3 9 student. He'll end up as a Buffalo or a Stanford Cardinal next season. His size, Kevin, 6'1", 225, perfect for this game and where he plays. He gets the carry again. Nice little move at the point of attack. And Barron's working hard to the 37-yard line. Five-yard pickup for Jake Barron's as he continues to run very hard for Miller North. Right over that left side behind Shalito and Fear. And now he gives his, his team a chance. It's third down and call it four. He gives his uh, team a chance to get that first down. Uh, Jake Barrett's running hard, right side, left side. Matt, you talked about the holding situation. Today, when you hold, you've really got to hold because the rules have been relaxed so much. You almost, you've got to pull the guy down pretty much. Apparently, that's what happened on that play. Third down and four from the 38-yard line. Barron's gets the carry again, trying to get to the outside. Here comes the flag. Barron's is down at the 40-yard line. The flag thrown a long ways, but again, right in the middle of the offensive line, and this looks like another hold. Back judge. Yep. So Fred Petito probably shaking his declined. head a little bit about these. Yeah, that'll probably be declined. Yeah, I would, I would turn it down and, and make him down. kick it. 
They're discussing it right now. Zach Potter down on the sidelines, waving his hands right there behind uh, Jaworski. Hey, guys, yep. Down four. Fourth down, and it'll be a long two for Miller North. And here comes the punt team. Jordan Farrell will come in to punt this one away. Once again, that first penalty on first down, they gained 18 yards after the penalty, but it wasn't enough for first down. Those penalties just take you out of a drive. Ready to punt it away. Jordan Farrell. And a fair catch called for and made at the 33-yard line by Michael Stillmock. And great prep going back to work on offense. The 2004 Nebraska State High School Football Championships on NETV Sports made possible in part by the financial contributors to Nebraskans for Public Television. You too can help support your statewide network and become a member of NPTV by calling toll-free 800-634-6788. You can also join NPTV over the internet. Log on to our network website at mynptv.org, click membership, and follow the prompts. If you're enjoying our high school football coverage, support NETV today. Ryan Fisichero with the carry and no gain at all. Danny Wages leading the charge for the Millard North Mustang defense, and Fisichero could not get that play started. He'll lose two back to the 31. Great tackle that time by Wages coming up, filling the hole. Good form tackle that time. Good pad level as he made the hit and good leg drive, driving him back into the backfield so there was no gain on the play. Nine and a half remaining in this first half. Class A state championship last year, 38-7, to won by Miller North. So far, great prep with a 7-0 lead. Second and 12, play fake Gorski, looking for his tight end. This time it's Dan Glassman who makes the catch at the 34-yard line. Just a three-yard gain, good coverage, and a real solid tackle in the open field. Glassman, just a couple of uh, receptions on the year coming into the ball game. Two uh, receptions for 26 yards. And Make it three now. He has a touchdown mixed in with those two receptions. That's pretty good efficiency. Two catches, one TD, but nice job there. Gets it back up after that uh, running loss. Third down now at about eight, about nine, call it. Gorski back to throw. In trouble. Wings it out and incomplete. Just threw that one away, trying to get rid of it. He got hit just as he threw. Danny wages into the backfield once again. But a three downs and out, the Millard North defense coming to play tonight. Great job by Wages once again in this series. Youngster, 62 tackles on the year. He has three sacks, almost had a fourth right there, but he had the pressure. He's the one that caused that pass to go incomplete and caused his prep now to kick it. Fourth down and nine from the 34. Time to punt. Jake Moore, pressure comes, a line drive kick by Moore. It'll bounce to 35 and take a huge prep roll inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 16-yard line. What a roll for Jake Moore, who averages 33.4 yards per punt this year. He got a great field turf bounce. Well, after the Colorado game, tune in to Big Red Wrap-Up Tuesday night, November 30th, live at 7 p.m. We'll do a complete review of the game. We'll have the highlights. We'll have commentary. We'll have discussion about Nebraska's trip to the Big 12 title game, and we'll also have discussion about Nebraska's trip to the bowl game. Join Adrian Fiala and me for our next Big Red Wrap-Up Tuesday, November 30th, right here on NETV, Nebraska's home for sports. You know, there's a man after my heart right there. Total optimism by my colleague Kevin Cook. Right? Kevin, way to go. I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it on for size and see if it fits. I'm not sure. It's a little unfamiliar. Coleman with the carry over the right side, and Coleman will take it down to the 18-yard line. Zach Potter on the stop for great prep. Yeah, as I tell people all the time, if you put the gear on, go out and play, you got a chance, and the Huskers do have the chance. Here you see it again, Coleman trying to get outside. Potter just beating everybody up at the line of scrimmage and making the tackle short gain, two-yard gain by Coleman. Coleman hanging on to the ball now. The sophomore having a bit of a problem with that here in the early going, but hanging on after that big pop there by, Col uh, by Potter. Second and eight from the from the 18-yard line. Paul Homer in the backfield along with D.J. Coleman. And Coleman gets the carry again across the 20. And the ball pops free at the end of the play. Coleman having some ball control problems tonight as it pops out, but it's recovered by Grant Hayek for Miller North. Once again, it was at the end of the play there where they're trying to strip Coleman with the ball. And we'll see the replay here to see if it did come out. But once you start to fumble, now the defense starts telling each other, rip the ball out when he's going down. And sure enough, they do it again here. Let's see if he was down. 
So you can see they were trying to rip it out. Looks like he might have been down that time as Mike McClay tried to yank it out of there. Great lead block that time. Trap block by Corey Shalito on the lead play. Third down and three from the 23. The give to Barons into the secondary first down. Jake Barons. Oh, what tough running to the 33-yard line, first and 10. And once again, Shalito is out leading the play for Barons. Number 69 pulls around the guard or the center right there. See him come out, lean the way. And then it's just all up to Barron's from that point. Once he makes that block, he's into the secondary. It's up to them to make the tackle. Seven minutes under seven minutes now. 6.59 and counting down. First down and 10 from the 33. Millard North trying to get the offense rolling. 88 yards rushing so far tonight. The give this time to Paul Homer, and Homer stacked up on the right side of the line. One, two, three, four, five. Great prep, prep junior Jays to stack up Homer. And earlier we talked with Tom Jaworski, the head coach of Great Prep. He told us what they need to do defensively to win a state championship. I think for the most part, they're going to power at us for a big part of the game. We didn't do a very good job against that last year. Uh, they, and they're still going to run the option play with Robbie Knight, and uh, they did a good job in running the option. So, you know, we. We'd like to give it, get some three and outs, obviously, uh, but their strength is up front, and they're going to they're aggressive, they're an aggressive team, and that's what they hang their hat on. And then you can't give up the big play. You know, they don't throw it a lot, but certainly they're uh, they're passing and effective for big okay, plays. For them. Not a big play there, but a nice solid play by Jake Barons as he brings Miller North within three yards of a first down. It'll be three or third down and. Well, about two and a half yards for the first. Boy, and Millard North really uses their guards a lot. Uh, Shalito again that time pulling out Grant Hayek. We've seen him do the same thing from his guard spot, but Shalito leading the play again from that offside guard position on that trap. Third down and two from the 41. Barons to the outside. He's got the first down, a little bit of a stiff arm as he came around the corner. And Barons to the 46-yard line, a five-yard gain and a good stiff arm. That was a good job knowing where the first down stick was. It was a great stiff arm as he has a lead blocker coming around the left side. You can see here he's going to give a stiff arm and get to the yard marker. He knew it was third down and three yards, and he got about four or five there. Jacob Barons tonight. Jake Barons, 13 carries, 60 yards rushing tonight for Barons. And in this uh, last drive and a half they've had here, they've really come up the ladder in terms of yardage gain. Way down the yard, 101 yards now gained by Miller North. Tacked about another yard and a half onto that, eh? Jake Barron's with the carry once again. And get the feeling, you know, man, I'm not the prognosticator that Matt Davison is. I get the feeling, though, that Jake Barron's may get a few more carries tonight. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> He's going to get it a few more of, times. That's You're the kind right. of sturdy limb you usually go out yeah, on. Exactly. I figured you'd yeah. appreciate that. Exactly. How go much on. of the 101 does he have now? <laughs> you want me to do the Barons, play by play? Barron's has 62 <laughs> yards of the 103 now on 14 carries. And Barron's, who had 1,047 on the year, will look for more. Second and eight on the 48-yard line. Barron's across midfield down to the 48-yard line, a four-yard pickup. And it's third down and four. And let's go downstairs to Larry Putney. Larry? You know, Robbie Knight has not attempted a pass yet, but don't be lulled to sleep by that. If you take a look at what he's done the last two games, each of the last two playoff games, he's thrown a touchdown pass of 40 or more yards with right around two minutes left in the game to win the game. And those came against number five, Westside, and also against number one, Bellevue West. So while he doesn't throw the ball much, he's only had four completions all year. When he does throw it, they can be very big. Well, when Robbie Knight starts, it's usually very big as a state champion. Knight on the fake, looking for the corner. And Robbie Knight's going to end up a yard shy of the first down. Pretty good idea, but a pretty good defensive play by Creighton Prep to stay there and make sure Robbie Knight can't get the first. You're talking a, a good read right there, Kevin, because all of the action went to the right with Barron's. And good fake by Robbie Knight to come back right here below us and almost picks up that first down about a yard short, as you said. We'll see if Coach Potato might go for it here. Looks like he's thinking about it. And Wheels are turning. They will go for it here on fourth and about a foot and a half. It's not a whole mm. yard. Wouldn't be surprised to see Jake Barons get it. 
Henry Kelp ran the play in, and he's in the backfield. Two seconds remaining on the play clock. They just get it off in time. And what a hit in the backfield. Barron's gets away. He's in trouble, and down he goes. Look at the penetration from Creighton Prep. They knew Barron's was going to get the ball as well, and they came blowing through the hole. Five guys in the backfield before Barron's could even get started. Andy Keith is the guy who does all the damage right here. Number 33 for Creighton Prep. Tremendous effort by Keith, leading tackler on the ball club this year. And he stops that play dead in its tracks, and the ball goes over. Those are the risks you run when you go on for it. And now Creighton Prep with great field position at the Miller North 48-yard line. First down and 10 for Prep, leading 7-0. The give to Keith, and Keith rolls across the 45 to the 44, a four-yard pickup. Second and six, late stages of this first half. Well, if you'd like to get yourself a VHS copy or DVD of tonight's game or any of the state championship games, we make it very easy for you. Log on to the Internet. It's mynptv.org, or you can call one 800 228 Four six three zero. NETV is Nebraska's home for sports. Second and six from the 44. The give to Andy Keith and Keith comes through the hole, loses his footing, but able to dive ahead to get the first down at the 38. Good thing Kyle Crum was able to grab his ankles on that one, or he he was going to have a big, big gainer there. And you know, guys, on fourth down when you go for it. Not, if you don't get it, not only do you, do you not get it and give the other team great field position there, but Creighton Prep gets a little more energy. You know, you, you stop them on fourth down. Now you have a little more energy going into this offensive drive, and there you see three plays in a row. They have nice gains. First down and 10 on the 38-yard line. Creighton Prep trying to get things going here late from the 38 of Miller North. The give going up the right side. McClay with no room to run. Good job by the Millard North front in on the stop. Grant Hayek leading the way for Millard North. Also down at the bottom of that pile, Jacob Wolf. Prep three timeouts left here in the first half. Now under two minutes on the clock as more personnel comes in for Creighton Prep. They would dearly love to push one in right here, guys. Second down 10 from the 38-yard line. 7 nothing Prep. Again, the handoff to Mark Waring, a nice tackle. Waring had a little running room if he gets the corner, but Paul Homer, all he's done is tackle this year, and he makes another great stop. Not That's often it. you'll see the, the arm tackle work, but it does here. That's Homer. He's strong enough to get it done. Gets on the ankles and the shins. And you don't see your arm tackles work a whole lot, Matt, but he can get it done. Oh, he's a great defensive player. Has a nose for the football aid. That time came up the field and was able to get enough of his legs to knock him down. 169 tackles this year, but almost as impressive. 117 solo tackles coming into tonight as Creighton Prep uses its first time out with a minute 10 remaining in the first half. That's a, that's a remarkable number, but you see why Paul Homer has that high a number of tackles. It's He's quick to the ball, and he seems like he's always there first. Well, we have more football to go after tonight. Tomorrow morning, we're back here for two more as we start off the day at 11 a.m with the Class C-1 State Championship, Norfolk Catholic, and Boone Central. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the Class C-1 State Championship game. All of your 2004 Nebraska High School Football Championships are right here on NETV Sports. Coming up at halftime here of this Class A game in a minute and 10 seconds, we'll talk about some of the other sports going on this fall, tennis and volleyball. Of course, you saw volleyball last weekend here on NETV. Plus, we'll take a look at the first half stats and highlights coming up at halftime. Kind of look like a tennis guy, Kevin. You, play you know, I didn't tennis? play tennis. No, no. I basically had very little like athletic skill of any kind. I could talk guy? a lot. You're kind of a wiry golf. guy. Golf. You thing? stayed with golf, Matt. <laughs> You've seen my golf game. <laughs> I should have stayed with it longer. <laughs> or maybe stay with tennis. <laughs> that might have been. 39 from the 37. Gorski on the roll. Over the middle. Catch is made at the 31-yard line. Short of the first down by two yards. And it'll bring up a fourth and two. Zach Potter, nice catch, but he could not turn it upfield to get the first down. Big Zach tight Potter. end goes down. Sorry, Adrian goes down the field. Nice little in route there. and this Good throw good. that time by Gorski, getting it down the field in a place where he can catch the football. Good tackle, though. He was just a yard short, two yards short there of the first down. 
Excellent protection by the Creighton Prep offensive line to give Gorski time to throw it as the snap is off, and there we go. And the first down for Andy Keith and Moore to the 15, Keith down to the 10, and all the way down to the five-yard line. Nate Hiller along for the ride as Andy Keith rumbled five yards from Pater. Tried to set it up to go right, and Keith cuts it back across the center. Craig Parent. Good load-up block there. Look at that block by 65, Michael Brown. That's what springs it all. And then Keith has all that great strength. That takes Hiller again. Just not able to quite give him a ride all the way to the end zone like he did last time. But he gets it down to the five-yard line with 25 seconds left in the first half. Andy Keith not getting a lot of carries, Matt, but that's not a bad per carry average. Five carries, 80 yards for Andy Keith. Uh, yeah, that's pretty effective there. And once again, it was Nate Hiller trying to run him down there. Andy Keith, an all-Nebraska linebacker and probably going to be an all-Nebraska running back the way he's going here tonight. <laughs> At least in this game, no question about it. 16 yards per carry, five carries, 80 yards, and the touchdown for Creighton Prep. Take that any day of the week, be it a Tuesday, Wednesday, or a Friday. And uh, you talk about Keith, though, he's a punishing hitter both on offense and on defense. Both the guy just loves contact. As I said, all-Nebraska linebacker, super stater last year, make both of those again this year. Right now the situation, you have one timeout left, you're up a score. You want to make sure you get a field goal out of this thing, but you'd love to get a touchdown, obviously. It's important that they have that timeout left. We'll see what they go ahead and do here. If they try to put it in the air, look for their big tight end, look for Zach Potter, or if they're going to try to run the ball, you do have that timeout. So you have the luxury that you could do a running play here instead of having to throw if you didn't have any timeouts left. First down and goal from the five. Keith gets the carry right ahead, and Keith down to the two-yard line. Clock continuing to run. Prep's going to try to hurry to the line and spike it. Second and goal from the two. Gorski set, gives it instead. The handoff up the middle and into the end zone for the touchdown. Andy Keith scores for the second time tonight. Straight up power right over McGlade at 258. McGill at 284 on that right side. They don't wait around a whole lot. Quick count and get that touchdown in there. You can see what they did on that last timeout. Kevin, they called two plays in the huddle. They told the guys, if we don't score on this one, get back to the line of scrimmage, run another play quickly. That's what they did. Caught the defense a little off guard. Keith was able to get in the end zone. Still Mox extra point is straight through the uprights and eight seconds remaining in the first half and a huge touchdown for Creighton Prep. They lead 14 nothing. We'll watch it again. It just straight up power and they collapse the middle. The offensive line just collapses the middle. Good lead up in there by McClay. Keith does it all uh, on his own from that point. The drive, eight plays, 48 yards, 259 remaining, or 259 used on the drive, and a two yard run by Keith. And remember that drive started when Millard North went for it on fourth down. They were exactly. turned away by the prep defense. So the defense, which has been, as Adrian mentioned earlier, the best defense in the state, that defense with a great play helps out with points. Boy, and it just it builds so much confidence on your football team on each part of the team. The offense, the defense, the special teams, they're all doing their job. Everybody can look at each other in the eye and say, way to go, good job. And you don't have to look at each other and say, hey, get with it, would you please? But and I think it was Andy Keith who made the stop on that fourth down in the backfield, too. It was. Too. He, was. So he was the guy who was uh, coming he's through played on the screen. Big role here tonight. The squib kick bounces up and grabbed at the 23 yard line. Paul Homer looking for some yardage. A nice return by Homer to the 36 yard line. One second left, Millard North. We'll have one play, and we'll see if Fred Petito decides to do what Fred Petito's done a couple of times this year, especially in the playoffs, as Larry mentioned to us. Throw it up, get a big play out of the passing game. Why, Why not? not? Why not? Give it a go. Just make sure you get the ball far enough downfield and see what happens. Robbie Knight just four for 11. Three of his four completions have been for touchdowns. Miller North would love to see one of those here. 14-0 prep, one second remaining. And they'll just hand off to Coleman. Coleman through a hole across the 45. A nice run by Coleman to the 48-yard line. But halftime is here. The Class A state championship game with Creighton Prep leading Millard North 14-0. And Larry Putney's down on the field with Fred Petito. Coach, you're moving the ball. Barrett and Coleman both having success, but it's been penalties and a turnover. Yeah, yeah we kind of quit holding. Okay, and uh, 
That's some, you, know, you, you, you said that, Larry, but uh, we keep our hands in and we'll be able to move the ball. What do you say to the kids at half? Uh, we just got to play a little harder, hold our blocks a little longer, keep our hands in. Okay, we got to go ahead and tackle. We fan two tackles under the fullback traps. And, uh, you know, if we do that, we'll get beat. Thanks, Fred. All right, thanks. Halftime, Creighton Prep 14. Miller North nothing, the Class A state championship game. We'll return to Memorial Stadium in just a moment on NETV Sports. All across the state, Nebraskans use electricity every day. And that electricity is 100% publicly owned. So profits don't go to stockholders, but are returned to Nebraskans. And because the power is supplied to Nebraskans by Nebraskans, it's reliable. Always there when you need us. NPPD, together with your local public power utility. Programming is provided in part by Education Quest Foundation. For over 15 years, Education Quest has offered free college planning services. These services include scholarship searches, student loan information, college selection, and help with completing financial aid application. Education Quest is located in Kearney, Lincoln, and Omaha. Appointments are available at 800-666-3721. He staked his company to start the information age. He raised the limits to open the skies for everyone. She bet girls were ready for a new way to play. Three gamblers who risked it all. They made America. Monday night at 9 central time on NETV. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is NETV and NETV Digital Television, celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska. Just a reminder that kids who participate in high school sports tend to go a little farther than those who don't. The Class A State High School Football Championship is at halftime. Creighton Prep leading Miller North 14-0 at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium. I'm Kevin Kugler, joined by a very special guest, Deborah Velder, assistant director of the NSAA. Deborah is so good, they let her ha cover many, many sports. We're going to talk two sports with Deborah here at halftime. Let's start with girls tennis. It's just finished up. Talk a little bit about the tennis tournament. Well, we'll talk about boys, boys tennis. tennis. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm boys <laughs> tennis, girls volleyball. You're, I'm getting right. myself screwed up here. Let's boys talk boys tennis, tennis first. finished up in October for us with Creighton Pitt, Prep being our Class A champion and Omaha Scott being our Class B champion. Um, as always, our concern is with the weather when we talk about tennis, but we we're fortunate that we didn't have rain. We had wind. We you don't get both uh, ways uh, with our tennis championships, but it was a great tournament and uh, got through over 100 matches in Lincoln and over 100 matches in Omaha. Talk about the difficulty of hosting a tournament that goes on with A in one and B in another city. That's got to be a, a difficult thing for you. You have a great staff to help out, I know. Yes, we do, and um, we're fortunate to have great facilities, but it does split our staff, and we are required then to put uh, our part of our staff in Omaha and part of our staff in Lincoln, but also there's other state tournaments going on at that same time, so it is difficult, and we rely on the help of our schools, and we've got some key people at the different sites that, that help us make an excellent tournament. Well, let's take a look at the results in boys' tennis this past fall. Omaha Creighton Prep, as Deborah mentioned, in Class A, and Omaha Scott, the champions in Class B, boys' tennis, the state championships as we look ahead and we look past this year for boys tennis. Do you see numbers continuing to grow? Tennis is a sport that has at times suffered in popularity at the professional level. Do you see that it reflected at the high school level or is it still strong? It appears we're going to remain fairly constant uh, with our numbers in boys tennis. Uh, we haven't seen any growth, significant growth in the last seven years 
uh, several years, except we did uh, have see a slight decline. So that may be a sign of a time with uh, boys' athletics as we're heading into the various sports. Well, this past weekend on NETV, you had the chance to look at high school volleyball. A very busy day, but a very exciting day at the NU Coliseum. We had three five-game matches. But first, before we talk about the tournament, first time at the NU Coliseum, I heard nothing but rave reviews. Oh, the kids were excited. The spectators were excited. We were excited. And uh, we were just happy to be there. Um, there were a lot of first times this year for volleyball in Nebraska. We were at the Coliseum. We were at six different sites on Friday. We, this was our first year for rally scoring, our first year for playing three out of five for our championships. And so we're, we're just exciting and excited, and we're excited to see what our schools are going to want us to do for next year. Does the Coliseum remain in the mix for future tournaments? Oh, it's our hope that it does. Um, we are, this was just a one year at the Coliseum because we will have to move to the Sports Center next year for the state volleyball finals because of a home football game, but we're hoping that it's something that we can figure in the mix for years to come. Well, I know the girls were so excited to play on really the, the, the Nebraska volleyball court. I know that was exciting for them. Of course, winning state championships wherever you play is always exciting. It seemed like this year we had some of the best and most evenly contested matches in a lot of years. I've been watching and doing high school volleyball for any TV for a lot of years. We had some fantastic matches last Saturday. Oh, I have to agree with you, Kevin. We've got... Uh, a competitive volleyball across all of our classes. We've got great athletes. I think part of it was getting to the Coliseum and be able to showcase. And I think that all of our teams played at the top of their game on Saturday. And uh, that made it for a very exciting tournament. Well, in a new venue, there's always bugs to work out when you go to rally scoring. All things told, do you feel like it was a successful first year with three out of five with rally scoring with the new venue for the NSAA? Definitely I do. The positive far outweighed the negatives this year. And and uh, like I said, we'll be reevaluating things, but as always, we'll do what is best for the kids. Well, and there's no question that when you watch high school volleyball in this state, and, and I know you're a fan, I'm certainly a <laughs> fan as well, the level of play every single year goes up and up and up. This is really, I know it's a football state for boys sports. This is a volleyball state in a lot of aspects in Nebraska. Oh, definitely. And it's embraced not only here in Nebraska, but I have... Um, friends in the neighboring states, in the state associations, and they look up to our high school program, and they strive to achieve the things that we have at the high school level. Well, it's, it was an exciting weekend last weekend. It's certainly an exciting weekend once again for football this weekend, as girls volleyball was a, was just, it was just a huge hit. Let's take a look at the, uh, the champions in all six classes. We crowned them right here on NETV last week. Bellevue West in Class A, Elkhorn in a five-game thriller in Class B, Lincoln Lutheran, another five-gamer in Class C1, West Point Central. Catholic, Humphrey, St. Francis, Paxton, all winners in the girls' volleyball state championships a year ago. And it's just so fun to see those five-game matches, the Elkhorn match, the Lincoln Lutheran match, everybody fighting so hard. What, what thrillers. Oh, it is, and I hope it's something that we'll be able to continue. Deborah Velder of the NSA, we want to thank you for all of your help last week in putting volleyball on. We just thank you for sure. your, your continued support all season long. Thank you so much, Kevin, and we appreciate your support. Deborah Velder of the NSAA joining us here at halftime. Creighton Prep and Miller North. Prep leading North 14 0 at the break. Programming on NETV is made possible by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. Escalator or stairs? It may seem like an easy choice, but the hard truth is the illness and disease that result from inactivity cost about $76 billion a year to treat. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska, we believe that cost is much too high, and not just in terms of money. So when it comes to keeping you healthy and keeping health care affordable, walking works. Your health, your choice. Programming on NETV is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. Soy biodiesel is a soy-based, clean-burning, renewable fuel that can be blended with petroleum diesel to help reduce America's dependence on foreign oil. Soy biodiesel, making a difference for soybean farmers and you. Next time on NOVA, a treasure unearthed. Bronze artifact. Why were they buried? A warrior hero's epic struggle. This was the place to go to in case of a refuge. The lingering mystery is, what else is in the cave? Now, a daring expedition uncovers dark secrets hidden for thousands of years. Will their discoveries rewrite history? This is the smoking gun. Ancient refuge in the Holy Land. Tuesday night at 8 central time on NETV. In the middle of the field that is caught at the 5, 15, at the 10, at the 5, and into the end zone for the touchdown! 
Back line to right field. Can he get over? He does! Home run! Carbon Keener! Mavericks with an opportunity in the score! Alex Nicobori! From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is NETV and NETV Digital Television, celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska. NETV sports coverage of the 2004 Nebraska State High School Football Championships are brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. The blues are good for you. And by Art FX, a proud sponsor of Nebraska High School and College Athletics on NETV Sports. 14-0, Creighton Prep with the lead over Miller North here at halftime of the Class A State High School Football Championship. A good one so far tonight, and along with Adrian Fiala, Matt Davison, I'm Kevin Kugler. Glad to have you with us tonight. Larry Putney, of course, down on the field, helping out the broadcast as well. And we've had a, a very entertaining broadcast tonight, guys. We've had a very entertaining game from Creighton Prep and Millard North. And Creighton Prep, they've been talking about 38-7 to for a year. That's how bad they lost this one last year. They're in the driver's seat right now. Kevin, they had it written on everything, according to Todd Jaworski. He wasn't too concerned about it, but his players certainly were. And their defense, Matt, tonight playing like that. So far, a shutout in this first half. Playing very, very tough defense. And given their offense, good field position with the football to do something once they get it and move it down the field, which they did That's score. right. Miller North has moved the ball, but they haven't been able to get into the end zone. And Creighton Prep's done a great job tonight, Kevin, on defense. And then when they get the ball, they're running the ball effectively. With Jake Barons, they're really running it well and getting into the end zone. So right now, they find themselves up 14 another and a half time. Yeah, both teams have done a nice job running the football and they have really been able to get the ball moving on the ground. Let's take a look at some highlights of the first half and give you an idea of what we're talking about. And you'll see a lot of on the ground play. In fact, passing yards for Miller North Dunn. Creighton Prep with 24 and a lot of good, hard running from Andy Keith. Andy Keith, seven carries, 85 yards, two touchdowns, averaging 12, just over 12 yards per carry. Here he is again on the TD. Second touchdown of the night. That one came with eight seconds remaining in the first half. There it is again. Another one again. They got that after the defense held on four down at midfield. There are the first half numbers. 163 yards for the Jays. 115 yards for the Mustangs. No surprises there. The passing yardage, not a factor at all for Miller North. And just a few catches for Zach Potter. Three catches, 22 yards to make up most of that passing yardage, man. Yeah, four out of six there passing. Miller North. May have to throw the ball a little bit here in the second half. Down 14 to nothing right now. Let's see what they do. You know they're going to pound the football, but you know Coach Petito has a couple wrinkles in the arsenal there. Let's see if he has a passing game here for us in the third and fourth quarter. The second half of the Class A state championship is next. Craig Prep leads Miller North 14 0. Brian LTH West is bringing advanced neuroscience technology to Nebraska, offering the state's first gamma knife radio surgery to non-invasively treat brain tumors and severe facial pain, and working with Nebraska's only physician specially trained in coiling for brain aneurysms. Just two examples of our commitment to neuroscience care for Nebraskans and our neighbors. Brian LGH, the first name in healthcare. There is no place like Nebraska, dear old Nebraska, you. We'll be back with more of today's event in just a minute. Hi, I'm Steve Graziano of NETV. You know, independent research tells us here that sports programs are watched by more people than just about anything else we have on NETV. Now, I'm not surprised by that, but I am surprised that not everyone who's watching now helps us out with the broadcast. That means membership in Nebraskans for Public Television. A contribution of just $60 not only goes a long way to make sure we get to keep sports on NETV, but you'll also receive our member card, which gives you savings across the state. Call now, 1-800-676-5446, or visit our website, mynptv.org slash members, to learn more and to join. All we ask is that you be part of our team. We're doing our part by giving you the programs that you want. 1-800-676-5446. Thanks very much. 
Celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska, this is NETV and NETV Digital Television, a service of Nebraska Educational Telecommunications. Trap plays is just lead plays. Second down in a yard from the eight-yard line. Right up the middle, Kimbrough to the five. Kimbrough to the end zone for the touchdown. Millard North leads it 13 to nothing. Again, that's just Millard North football for you. Power game right up the middle. Creighton Prep knows it's coming, and they've got to do a good job of stopping it. It's just going to be a very difficult challenge for them tonight. I think they knew that. See that block right there by Shilato, 69. He just took the pins right out from under. Uh, Craig Parent on the defensive line. Another look at it, Eric. Keith Lloyd kind of leading the way, too, as a fullback there, just kind of pounding through, making sure Kimbrough gets Last year, the Class A state championship, a little different story than what we have developing here tonight. They had a 38-7 win last season for Millard North, but now the Mustangs down by 14. We'll get down to Larry Putney. Now he's standing by with the Jays head coach, Tom Jaworski. Thanks, Kevin. Tom, things went well that first half. Not much uh, to complain about. Uh, yeah, we, we got a 14 to nothing lead. That's obviously good. Uh, they, they're moving the ball a little bit too much on with power football, but we're hanging in there as long as we don't want to give them the big one, obviously. And, uh, you know, we've taken advantage of some, uh, you know, the fumble and the, uh, the good fourth down tackle by Andy. So those are big plays in the game, short, short enough to field, certainly. And offensively, you're really controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, offensively, we're doing okay. We, we just got to be able to move the ball a little bit better, and we got to get the ball. We got to hopefully turn them over a little sooner and get our offense on the field. But on that same tone, our defense is hanging in there, too. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Indeed it is, Kevin. Uh, their defense providing the opportunities for the prep offense to take over, good field position, and take it out and score. And uh, Miller North, is kind of interesting, that flashback we had. Uh, Corey Shillito was the, the main blocker on the, that touchdown run, and tonight he has been just a force with Miller North running the football, getting that running game back in shape. Uh, Shillito at 6'1", at 240, playing that left guard. So that whole bunch is incredibly big, and I expect them really to torque it up here in the second half. And, Move it against prep. We'll see if that happens. My Kimbrough last year for Miller North was just so difficult to stop. I, that game, Kimbrough had some huge holes to run through, and that offensive line was a big part, and they're back again. That's really one of the big huge. reasons that Miller North is here. They're huge, and they're, and they're veterans. And the, you, when you have a very young backfield and some inexperienced quarterback, it's nice to have that veteran offensive line. This year marks NETV's 50th anniversary. It was in 1954 when NETV signed on for the first time. Now, 50 years later, we continue to serve the entire state with public TV, radio, and educational media. Thank you, Nebraska, for 50 years of support to NETV. Wiley veteran coach there at halftime, though. Up 14-0 in the state championship game, but there's always things they can improve on. They're getting too much offensively, even though they haven't got into the end zone. Just funny to hear a coach like that. Always can improve. Always can improve. Have you yeah, ever met a satisfied coach? I don't know that I have. <laughs> never have and never will. No. <laughs> always looking for the edge. Got to have that edge. Kevin, you mentioned about the, the, uh, the senior leadership earlier on in the broadcast. That Miller North line is all senior except for the center, Jared Barrick. And uh, everybody else is in the senior class. Great leadership. As Fred Petito told us earlier, the seniors really have stepped up and played extremely well here in the later uh, latter part of the season. Michael Stillbach will kick it off for Creighton Prep. And one yard deep in the end zone, Jimmy Conway will walk out as it'll go to the 20-yard line. And a touchback, Miller North at the 20, first down and 10. Can't run it out of there in college, you can, but in high school, once it crosses a plane, it is dead and uh, comes out to the 20. So at the 20 is where Miller North will go to work, first down and 10. Coleman and Barons behind Robbie Knight. Double tights on the line once again. And the give to Barons, and there is just not much room over that right side. Zach Potter in on the stop for Creighton Prep. I think Peter Doberman also underneath a lot of that, Kevin, 28. I think this is an important drive here for Millard North, even if they don't get any points on the board, just to flip the field position here and get a couple first downs, get some offensive momentum at least to give the guys confidence that they can move the football here in the second half. I think it's important that they put, a, put together a drive here. Second down and nine from the 21. 14-0, Creighton Prep leads over Millard North. The give to Coleman. 
Try on the outside, big hit at the 25 yard line from Tony Turp, the right corner who came in and really stuck DJ Coleman. Excellent receiver, Tony Turp, also an excellent corner here playing that right corner. Make sure the play stays inside. You see a lot of white jerseys to the inside there. If he happens not to make that tackle, then his buddies will, but great hit by Turp. Third down five for Miller North at their own 25 yard line. Look at DJ Coleman, 11 carries, 55 yards tonight for the sophomore tailback. To throw, Knight floats it over the top, catch is made at the 35-yard line. David Thorson to the 37, first down for Miller North on the first pass they've thrown all night. Great touch right there from Robbie Knight. You can see the first pass play. Nice lefty spiral, lobs it right over the top of the defender there. And a Mike McClay could not quite make the play there and a nice catch for the first down, David Thorson. Surprised him right at the right time. Great call. I don't know if it came from the, from the bench or upstairs, but whoever made it, great call. First down and 10, ball on the 37-yard line. Miller North keeps the drive going. Coleman gets the carry, working to the outside. Coleman held up as he got to the line by Cameron LaFleur, who just got a hand on his jersey, and that slowed Coleman's turn to the corner and allowed his teammates to finish him off just a one-yard gain. Again, Anthony Turp coming up, Kevin, from that corner spot to, to make the hit once LaFleur. LaFleur is number 35 here. He's got a handful of jersey right there, and there's Turp coming in. Well, and... McClay gets a shot too, Michael McClay. Everybody's in on this party. <laughs> Holding up DJ All Coleman right. and people just DJ's not, like a pinata. Yeah, DJ's not happy about the dance, but everybody else is. One second on the play clock when they snap it. The option toss to Coleman around the corner. Not a lot of running room. McClay again finishing off okay, Coleman after a pickup of three to the 41 yard line. Great prep, pretty good lateral speed as they're able to cover the edge. You yeah. bet, you bet, and that's that's what that play has to have on offense. You've got to have speed to the outside. That's what made Oklahoma so great running the option play, and Nebraska, when they had speed in the backfield, uh, running the option play so well. You've got to have speed to get that pitch man to the edge, and then, of course, the quarterback and the pitch man need that good relationship, a good pitch. They had it there, but, man, Creighton just came up, Matt, and just filled it up. Third down, six from the 41-yard line. The give to Barron's working up the middle. Barron's no running room. Two-yard gain, and that is all. Closed down once again. And who's leading the charge? Andy Keith, the guy right there to stick, Jake Barron's. He's been all over the field tonight, guys. Offensively running the football and defensively making plays from his linebacker position. Another punt here from Miller North, but at least they got a couple first downs there, guys. It wasn't total a totally stalled drive. They got a couple first downs and won't give Creighton Prep great field position. Waiting to punt it away. Terp and Hankins back deep. Taken at the 30 and out to the 33-yard line goes Michael Stillmock, rather Stillmock with the return. Let's go downstairs to Larry Putney. Thanks, Kevin. You know, before the game, we talked to Tom Jaworski about last year's championship game in which Prep lost 38-7 to to Miller North. And just ask him, you know, does that have any bearing on this game at all? I don't think so, personally. I think the kids think it does. <laughs> They've got 38-7 written all over everything. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, be honest, but yeah, it does. I, I think they realize that. And personally, I just hope it is not an intimidating type of thing. I, I don't think so, but uh, they remember, yes. And obviously, they talked about it in the pregame, so it matters to the kids. No, no question about it. When you get beaten the state championship game 38-7 and you have a chance to beat the team that did it to you last year, you remember it and you want to get a little bit of revenge. Yeah, your revenge. Uh, just show everybody that, uh, hey, we're not as bad as what happened there and we're out to prove a point. And Prep is uh, out there trying to get that done. As clock winds down here in the third quarter, Prep up 14 by 14 points. Second down five from the 38-yard line. Gorski with the give straight ahead. Andy Keith into the secondary again. Keith shedding a tackle for the moment. Finally able to bring down okay, Keith is Nate Hiller at Andy the Miller Keith. North 45-yard line. Nate Hiller should have bought a pass. He's been riding Keith all night long. And if he doesn't make that play, Kevin, it's another touchdown for Keith. Breaks a couple tackles through the secondary. Great burst for a big fellow once he gets through the line. 
Nice burst getting upfield. Nate Hiller finally makes the play after Boy, a big gain. And the blocking up front, tremendous by Michael Brown and Craig Parent, Joel Peterson. Terrific blocking on that left side. On the 45, wearing up the middle and wearing ahead across the 40 to the 39 yard line. Six yard pickup for Mark Waring. And just big chunks of yardage on the ground right now for great prep. Take a look here at the linebackers. A handling up front. Linebackers trying to get to the outside. They both get caught in. They both went right on that play. And he cuts back. Play designed to go left. He cuts back to the right and picks up good yards second and four. 39 yard line of Miller North. Creighton Prep on the move again. Leading 14 nothing. Straight ahead give play again to McClay and McClay dropped by Nate Hiller at the 36 yard line. I'll tell you what Hiller has been involved in some pretty big plays but he's having a big night. That's his eighth tackle of the evening. And sometimes really not a good thing for yeah. your safety. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly the point. You want your safety to be involved but not that involved. No, leading tackler, you don't want him to be. That's Hiller. Hiller's about 180. Six yeah. foot one. Six one, 180. Keith is about 220. I know I'm putting my money on. Gorski oh, yeah. on the sneak on third and one, and he's got the first down as he moves it across the 35 and down near the 34 yard line. Dan Gorski at six foot four and 194 pounds. Strong kid, good speed, 4'9 in the 40. He is rated as the number eight prospect in the state of Nebraska this year. Being recruited by Kansas, by Harvard, and a chance perhaps even to walk on at Nebraska. First down and 10 from the 34. Give again straight ahead. Keith, another big hole into the secondary. Keith in the 10, fumbles the football. Ball is loose at the 10 yard line and it's scooped up at the three by Creighton Prep. They keep the possession. I think it was number 40 that got it. Greg Esposito. Look at the blocking right there. Just incredible blocking by the Creighton Prep offensive line. And then it's just bull running right here. Yeah, number 40 for uh, Creighton Prep, Esposito. Look like Barron's may have just poked that free. Just the very end as Keith went by. Gorski on a quick sneak. And Gorski down at the one yard line. Trying to catch the defense sleep in there, just do a QB sneak, try to get it into the end zone. Got it down to about the half a yard line. Okay, who's gonna get it, man? Well, I'd give it to Keith, but what do I know? I'm just some dope in the booth, but I would give it to Keith. Gorski might, they might get him one here. Sneak it again. Keith's got two tonight, nine carries, 133 yards. Over. Second down and goal, and it is Gorski on the sneak. Does he get in? Still waiting to unstack the pile, and it is third down. He did not get in, so two sneaks from Gorski, and they're still outside the goal line. Tried to take it right between uh, the center, Craig Perrin, and Jake McGlade, the right guard, 280 and 258. It's a pretty good bunch to stay behind. Good friends to have in that offensive line. And here comes number 78, McGill, back in the game. The jumbo package. 284, Dave. yeah. Look at the power. <laughs> the field is beginning to tilt on the right side. Zach Potter's on the right side. Third down and goal from the one. There's Keith banging the door on the right side, but Miller North will not let him in. Mm. What a stand for the Mustang defense. It's fourth down. Boy, they had all their beef in there on that play, on that formation. Might have lost a few inches there, guys. Good job by the defensive go. line, and of course, Creighton, Plep, Creighton Prep players want to go for it here on fourth look, down. Look at his lid. Look at his helmet. Those stripes are gone up front. Scratched up, beat up. Those are, those are badges of honor, right, Matt? That's right. Everybody, everybody wants that on their helmet. Oh, character. I never had any of those on my helmet. Fourth down and goal <laughs> from the one. Keith gets the carry to the goal line. Reaches across. Touchdown. Just reached across at the end of the play and broke the plane of the goal line. His third touchdown of the night. Just squeeze it in. Keep that effort. Keep it moving. Head up field. He's, he's happy about it. He's giving his team what may be a 21-point lead here very shortly. 11 carries, 134 yards, and now three touchdowns for Andy Keith. Extra point attempt is good from Mike Stillmock. 3.49 to play in the third quarter. 21-0, and watch at the end, he sticks that ball right across the goal line. 
He didn't get it by battling. much. Boy, but Clay, a great ISO block right there. Right there. Yeah, he got it across about half a yard. That's all you need. 10 play, 67 yard drive. Impressive drive for Brayton Prep. Four minutes, 22 seconds off the clock, and the one yard fourth down touchdown run. Uh, that man, Andy Keith, and what a championship he is at. Andy Keith being recruited by Missouri, Kansas State, Kansas. No offers yet, but serious interest from those schools, along with, I presume, Kevin, a host of other uh, uh, Division I schools and probably a lot of Division II schools after Andy Keith. Do you feel you have more questions than answers about your child's college education? On December 9th, NETV will have a live call-in program, Countdown to College, to help you through the college process and answer your questions about your child's higher learning. Watch Countdown to College Thursday, December 9th, 7 Central on NETV. Working for a little yardage, Jimmy Conway from Miller North, trying to give the Mustangs some field position, but good coverage downfield by Creighton Prep, but Miller North will start inside its own 20-yard line. This possession becomes a must, I think, right now if you're Miller North. The way they play football, it's going to take them a little while to score without a big play. So this being down three touchdowns here, 21 points, you think with only 3.42 to go here in the third quarter, they need to put a drive together and get into the end zone. At the 18-yard line, they're 82 yards away from that touchdown. Barons and Coleman, and Coleman will get it on the toss. Barons leading out front. Coleman across the 25 and down near the 29-yard line. Should be a first down, 11 yards on the gain for D.J. Coleman. Kevin, you called it Barons leading out front. Watch 34. Right here, going to take Turp out of the picture. Adds about five yards to the run. So a good gain for Coleman. 14 carries, 70 yards tonight for D.J. Coleman. And a good start to the drive for Miller North. Double tights again. They'll be in that formation all night long. At the 29-yard line. Backs in the eye. The give. Looking for running room. Barons not much there. Met in the hole. Greg Williams, who's having a very nice night. Also Cameron LaFleur. They're creating prep. Straight up under the chin. Second down seven at the 32. Two minutes, 58 seconds left, third quarter. 21-0, Creighton Prep in the Class A state championship. You know, Matt, if they cannot get a touchdown here with 248 and counting, then you're right in terms of the throw the ball and because the, the clock is, is in the enemy of Miller North. If they can get something here right now, move the ball down the last 242. Here we go. Coleman to the right side, across the 35 to the 36-yard line. He'll pick up four, and it's third and three coming up for Miller North. They get the touchdown here in the third quarter, make it a two-possession game. Then then they can still yeah, that, stay in their yeah. in their normal uh, offensive game plan. But if they don't get one here and go into the fourth quarter down by 21, Things change a little bit. The psychology of the game changes a little bit for Miller North, and they might start to press a little more, maybe throw the ball a little more, bit more than what they want to. But still time to do it here with two minutes, almost uh, under two minutes here. Third down, three from the 36. Knight the toss to Coleman. Barons with a good block out front. He's got the first down. Coleman at the 45, still on his feet. McClay brings him down at the 48. He's getting some great blocking out front on that left side from Jake Barrett's when they run the toss. That's right. Same play we saw in the first play of this drive. A nice toss to the left side here. You'll see Barron leading the way out there. Nice block again on the corner. Good job by Coleman using that speed. Get to the corner and get a couple extra yards there at the end of the play. And uh, likewise, excellent pursuit by Creighton Prep to keep Coleman uh, on the field and not down uh, in the end zone. McClay made his 15th tackle of the night on that play for Creighton Prep. Flags are down. Flag on the play. And we'll mark that one off as Miller North discusses it with the referee. The clock ran out, I believe. No, offsides offside. against Miller North. It looked to me like they lined up offsides, yeah, guys. They, they were right straight down in front of us. It looked to me like they actually, a couple guys on the left side of the offensive line there had lined up with their helmet in the neutral zone. That's how they're making such big yardage on the left side. They're getting a head start. <laughs> First and 15 like, now on the 43. Like we said earlier, take any edge if you can <laughs> get it. Absolutely. It's but the state championship game. If you're not going to use it now, when are you going to use it? But the penalty situation again raises its ugly head. 
stymies a drive right here. Four penalties, 29 yards tonight against Miller North. Coleman with the carry on the right side. Not a whole lot of running room. Andy Keith in there to help out on the stop for Creighton Prep. Under a minute remaining in this third quarter. And a second and long, and this is uncomfortable yardage now for Miller North, second and 13. Yes, it is, and you're going to have to see Miller North now trying to get the play in a little bit quicker, not let the play clock run down inside 10 seconds every time. Try to get a few more plays off. Second down, 13 from the 45. Up the middle, Barons to midfield, a five-yard pickup, but still well shy of the first down. It'll bring up a third and long for Miller North. That may be the final play of the third quarter. Nothing but power again, and uh, we're used to seeing that the last couple of games. No different here tonight as both of these teams running excellent power football. Clock continues to wind out. Last play. Well, North will get one more playoff. Third down and nine from the 49-yard line of the Mustangs. Toss play right side, Coleman. Nice cutback. Wrapped up, though, just into prep territory. Keith and McClay combine on the stop. And the third quarter comes to a close. We played three in the Class A state championship game. Great prep in control. They lead 21 to nothing. He staked his company to start the information age. He raised the limits to open the skies for everyone. She bet girls were ready for a new way to play. Three gamblers who risked it all. They made America. Monday night at 9 central time on NETV. The best in high school and college sports is on NETV. She is just on fire here. She did have a band in Class C. That From volleyball to basketball, football to hockey, NETV is Nebraska's home for sports. Celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska, this is NETV and NETV Digital Television, a service of Nebraska Educational Telecommunications. TV sports coverage of the 2004 Nebraska State High School Football Championships are brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us. By Brian LGH Medical Center, the first name in health care. By the Nebraska Soybean Board, promoting soy biodiesel fuel, clean burning and renewable, making a difference for soybean farmers and you. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, community grants, and college planning services. Fourth down, five from the Creighton Prep 47, start of the fourth quarter, and Miller North will go for it, trailing by 21. Barons and Coleman line up behind Robbie Knight, the quarterback. Huge play for Miller North, and a timeout taken by Robbie Knight of Miller North. That is their first called timeout, and that's one that will not make Fred Petito terribly happy when you're coming out after the change of quarter. You've had a lot of time to talk about it on the sideline, and now they're going to change their mind and I punt it away. Just were, you the the, were you watching the clock? I didn't see if the clock it was, was close. It was, was close. Coming down. They, were, okay. they were just waiting, I'm guessing, to try to draw prep offside. And yeah. At that point, took the timeout. So perhaps Fred Petito not unhappy with that timeout usage. Well, right now, again, as we talked about a couple of minutes ago, the, the psychology of the football game now begins to change a little bit. Millard North will be under more pressure to run, maybe try to stretch that prep defense a little more, maybe run the option, option pass, if they have it in the playbook and go from there. Anthony Turp and Michael Stillmock waiting for the punt. Stillmock takes it at the nine. Up the sideline, Stillmock to the 20-yard line, and a nice return for Stillmock. Let's go downstairs to Larry Putney. Well, thanks, Kevin. You know, one of the more tragic events, as everybody across the state knows, is the fate of a, a Brady Barron, who was playing in a game for Lincoln East earlier this year, suffered a head injury, now on his way to recovery, which is the good news, and we're joined now by John Gingery, the Lincoln East uh, head football coach. How is Brady doing? He's doing better. Uh, we're encouraged by the progress he's made. He's, uh, he's been on a walker. He's been feeding himself. He's starting to put sentences together. So 
the outlook is good, so we're encouraged by that. And you told me he's recognizing mom and dad, and he's on his way back. He knows his mom and dad, he knows his brothers, and he's uh, starting to get some of his memory back, and, uh, and we're excited about that. Uh, so hopefully everything stays on the even keel. That's certainly great news, and I know everybody around the state wishes Brady the best, and everybody's been praying for him for so long. And there's so many things going on to help uh, Brady and the Brady Baron Foundation. And I know uh, some kids were going out, they were raising money over Halloween, and just recently you had a fundraiser. What else is coming up uh, to help Brady? Well, there's a, there's a dance tonight, as a matter of fact, I was supposed to be at, but it was, but I had to come down here. So there's there's continually, we're trying to get some things going where we can continue to, to pump some money into it, because you know it's gonna be it's gonna be expensive, and, and hopefully we can defer some of those costs. But, uh, you know, the family wanted me to be sure and say thank you to everybody across the state, across the country. We've had people from all over the country uh, Go to Brady's website and uh, and buzz in. I think he's had over 37,000 hits on that website. So why don't you give us the address? It's uh, www. Uh, Can I put you on the spot. Caring, Caring Bridge. Uh, dot. Bradybaron.org. Dot ne. Dot org. Okay. So yes, you did. That was good. But. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's it. And they've had about 37,000 hits on that thing, and, and people have just been wonderful across the state. Uh, other football teams have chipped in and, and sent checks, and it's just been amazing the outpouring we've had from the state of Nebraska. Thanks, John. We appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Well, that's a certainly a worthy cause, and Amen. I want to echo Larry's sentiments. We certainly wish the best, not only for Brady, but for his family. And you know, it's 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 tough on Brady, but. Anybody who has kids knows that when that happens to you and it happens to your child, it's equally as difficult on the parents and the support that he gets. It's a 24-hour process. So our, our best to not only Brady but his entire family. Absolutely, right. Kevin. We, we hope the best for him. And, you know, football's a great game. Unfortunately, sometimes there's injuries that happen, and, and uh, we can just hope the best for him, and he has a full recovery. Time to punt away. Nearly locked. Good pressure coming from Miller North. And a fair catch called for and made at the 38-yard line. And Miller North will get it back. A good stand by their defense on three and out. Coming up Tuesday, November 30th, your chance to get the inside scoop on the Colorado-Nebraska game. We'll have the highlights, commentary, discussion, and much, much more. It's Big Red Wrap-Up as we recap the Colorado game and point the season on to wherever it might be going, be it Kansas City for the Big 12 championship, be it a bowl game, or... I don't even want to talk about what else it might be. Tuesday, November 30th, at 7 o'clock Central Time on NETV Sports. Only, Fiesta Bowl. Positive, only positive thoughts, guys. It could be Fiesta Bowl. Fiesta Bowl. Beat Oklahoma in the Big 12. There we go with the... Uh... Nate Sell on the reverse. Sell looking for some running room, and he is down near the 48-yard line, a 10-yard gain, and a first down for Miller North as they run the reverse to Nate Sell. It's what Miller North has to do, as we said at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Had a stretch to field and start to do things that they just haven't done here in this ballgame thus far. Run the reverse, run some counters, run the option, maybe run the option pass, or maybe throw the ball a little bit more. What do they have? One pass on the evening, Kevin? Through, uh, One pass, 12-yard gain yeah. to David Thorson. So those are the kind of things they're going to have to do to get back in the game in a hurry. Barons and Coleman behind Robbie Knight, first down and 10 from the 48 option to the short side. Knight in some trouble. Zach Potter was right there. And Potter, so quick off the line, makes the grab on Robbie Knight and stops him for no game. You know, we haven't called his name a whole lot tonight, Zach Potter, but they're running away from him a lot, too. He's a great player there on the end. If you can go the other way, you're going to do that as an offense. He has a few grabs from the tight end position, but we haven't called his name a whole lot. Not a whole lot of people are going to be able to block Zach Potter. He's so big, he's strong, he's very quick, runs very, very well. And you saw it on that last play. Nobody was able to block him. He's up free. Made the uh, stop on the option. Second and 10 from the 48. Straight ahead for Coleman to the 46-yard line. You know, we haven't mentioned Potter's name a whole lot, but he has been involved in a lot of tackles, whether as an assist or solo. Potter tonight with nine stops, six of them on the assist, three solo tackles tonight for Zach Potter. So a very quiet night from a big play standpoint, but he's getting himself involved. Through the first half, he had uh, three catches, 22 yards. Uh, one more after that. Or no piece, that's, that's all he's that's got. It, so. So. Uh, he's going to have a lot more tackles on this field, I think. He will be coming to the University of Nebraska. Big, big play in. right here. No Kevin question. Third and five. Got to have this. Got to have this. On the option, Knight will keep. He's got the first down to the 40-yard line. Mark him at the 39. And here comes a flag at the end of the play. Some pushing and shoving in the middle of the field, and I think an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty is going to be called here. Personal foul, Zach Potter is signaling. 
A dead ball, so the play will count, and it will be a first down, but a personal foul against Millard North, and the play ended in maybe a little extracurricular activity downfield, Matt. I think there was. There, Nate Fair was down there with a defender from Creighton Prep. I'm not sure what happened, but he was picking himself up off the turf after the play was over. Well, that play was very typical of what head coach Fred Petito Miller North said uh, in the pregame, and that is that Robbie Knight really gives you the kind of competitiveness and the uh, the ability that you really want at that position. We saw it there, but unfortunately, it's going to go back because of that penalty. Well, that's a big setback. Huge I know they setback. have a first down, but that's a lot of yardage that they have to make up now in under eight minutes to play, trailing 21 nothing. Barons and Coleman on first down, and flags fly. The play stops before it gets started. And will this be a setback against Millard North again, or will this go against the Junior Jays? We'll find out from Marcus Wacker. Play intended to be a pass. Uh, Robbie Knight spreading out to the left-hand side over there. I never really understood that rule on, the, on a dead ball personal foul after the play. Why should it not be first and 25? They give him a first down and 10. Well, I think the, uh, they, don't they mark it off from the spot of the foul and goes back? Yeah, goes but if it's back. a dead ball and it was already a first down, you'd think maybe they're moving back 15 yards. You're thinking too much, man. Am I overanalyzing the I've game? I warned you about this. There's no trouble, there's nothing good that can come of that. First and 15 <laughs> from the 41. Coleman bobbled the pitch a little bit, and he's down to the 45-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup. Clock running, though, and as you mentioned, Dave, that clock is... The biggest yeah. enemy of Miller yeah. North right now. It really now. is, and it's becoming a, a, a larger enemy. Every second that ticks off now for Miller North, they don't get the ball in the end zone quick. It becomes a problem. And it gets down to that five-minute mark uh, with the score the way it is now, and then things start to be, the, the history pages start to, uh, to flutter a little bit. So Miller North really needs to step it up here. There are the penalty numbers, some big ones against Miller North. Really hard Second and 11 on the 45. Barons gets the carry, and Zach Potter gets the stop at the 49 yard line. Just a four yard pickup, and continuing to run that clock. 640 remaining in the fourth quarter. Compounded, Kevin, by the fact that Miller North uh, had to waste a timeout earlier and just have two left here in the ball game. If Miller North was moving the ball a little bit better, then maybe, the, again, the, the, the metal frame. The metal picture changes a little bit, but uh, since they're not and can prep is controlling, it's pretty tough on them now. In the mind. Third down and seven from the 49. 6.15 to play fourth quarter. Coleman gets the carry. Loses Rumble. the football again, and I think it fell right into his bread basket. Coleman has had a lot of problems handling the football. He juggled that for about four yards before he went down. I think we'll be able to see it here. He juggled that deep pitch on the last play, and now let's take a quick look here. Doesn't have it put away right there. Comes out. Potter may have swiped at it as he went by, and it just came right back into his hands as he came down. Very fortunate. It's fourth and two. Miller North will go for it. No choice. 5.38 to play. Knight on the option. The pitch to Coleman. Down he goes. Played beautifully on the edge. And I believe that was Tony Turp who made the tackle. It was, Kevin. Great job. He's done it all night, quite frankly. He filled up the uh, the corner over there. Great run support by Tony Turp to stop that play dead in its tracks. Seven Adrian. tackles, Adrian, from his cornerback position. Yeah. When they've run the option at him or sweeps at him. He's done a great job stringing it out that time and making the play on fourth down with only 5.28 to go. You wonder if that might have... Might, Might have just do it. done it for He does two prep. things on that. He contains the play, keeps it inside, and then makes the tackle incredible. Good stop. Give straight ahead to Mike McClay. McClay across the midfield stripe into Millard North Territory at the 49. Mike McClay. Second down for Creighton Prep. They're not as worried about that. They want to keep that clock moving. As you see it in the right-hand corner of the screen, 5-11, 5-10 to play. Tom Jaworski closing in on his ninth state championship. Great prep, perennial power in Class A. It's been a few years, 99 the last time they won it. They were the dominant team of the 80s with seven championships 
in the 80s. Straight ahead again to Andy Keith. And I've been impressed, Dave, that the way Creighton Prep has just powered it straight at this Miller North defense. This is a pretty good defensive unit. And they've really just run it right down their throats. Good unit, strong unit, tough unit, but that bunch up front for Creighton Prep really has controlled it a great deal here tonight, Kevin. And that offense has been able to capitalize on Miller, to Miller North mistakes and put up the 21 that they have. Time keeps winding down, 420 and on. And really the difference has been that they've had a few big plays. Miller North hasn't had those big plays in the running game when you constantly pound it. You expect to get a big one here and there. Creighton Prep has done that. Miller North really hasn't. And Matt, also Miller North has had a, a little more field to cover than Creighton Prep. The Creighton Prep defense has really created short fields for the offense. So uh, a good team effort is we're winding down close to three now, 355 and headed, headed south here. Fourth down and three. And Creighton Prep is going to hunt this one away. Certainly will milk off some clock here before they do. Creighton Prep tonight, 243 yards total offense, 219 of it on the ground. Haven't had to throw much. This is a team that can throw. They just haven't needed to. And time to punt it away. We've got flags down. It was fourth and three. And if the flag is against Miller North and offside, it'll give Creighton Prep the first down. We'll wait and see what... Marcus Wacker, our referee, has to say. It's a false start against Prep. So five yards at an on, they'll punt from five yards further back. It's a snap infraction on that one, which means the center must have moved the football before he actually snapped it. What's more, I know Moore had a great punt earlier in the ball game, but how's he doing? Two punts for 41 yards. 41 yards. He had a 50-yarder, yeah, 50 which was a yep. career long for him. And now Jake Moore will head back to Try to add on to that solid average tonight. Get some nice rolls on the field turf. Steve Costello on the long snap here. Good snap. Came the rush. Pretty solid punt. The line drive at the 21-yard line and down to the 25-yard line goes James Conway. Would you and your business like to help bring programs like these to NETV? You can become a corporate sponsor. Along with other Nebraska businesses, your contributions can support quality programming. Help support NETV by calling 1-800-634-6788. First and 10 from the 25, Miller North with just 3.08 on the clock. Creighton Prep just that close to a state championship. 7,812 on hand here tonight, the attendance here in this Class A state championship game on a pretty nice night for football. Beautiful night, Kevin. As a player, you love this kind of night. Wonderful night to play. Play fake. Knight wants to throw, lofts it out, double coverage, and it's intercepted. Well covered on the play, the interception for David Carlisle, and that ought to just about do it for Creighton Prep. You talked about Zach Potter earlier on. He's going to put pressure. He put pressure on Knight that time. And then Potter got way, way up in the air, and Knight, Knight had to throw the ball way up. But watch, 87 there, bottom of your screen, coming in. Now watch this, up in the air, and Knight getting away as fast as he can, but the ball underthrown because of Potter's pressure. First pick of the year for David Carlisle. First and 10 from the 44-yard line. Creighton Prep now with 2.59 remaining. And they're going to take a timeout. Prep wanting to make sure they have the proper personnel out there to get this play run and talk things over with 2.59 to play. And let's go down on the field, see what Larry Putney's up to. Well, you know, Kevin, this may be the ninth state championship for uh, Creighton Prep, but it's the first for four seniors, actually five seniors, four of which started when they were sophomores. Take guys like Gorski and McClay and Keith, McGlade, Potter. Four of those started when they were sophomores here. And when they came to Creighton Prep, they got together and they said, you know what? We need to win a state championship before we leave here. What a special night this is for all, five, all of the seniors, but especially those four who are captains and were here and started and played when they were sophomores for Creighton Prep. Daniel Gorski, as we mentioned, the guy who's moving on to college after this season, had four for six in the passing department at halftime and hasn't thrown a pass in this second half. He has just handed off, but it's all that you need to do. Larry, what else? You know, Kevin, you were talking about Gorski. He, uh, he's been talking about walking on here at Nebraska. The Huskers have been looking for another quarterback, but not sure they have uh, a scholarship. And he's talking about coming down here and walking on. He was at the Huskers camp, did very well in camp, thought it was a live arm, and 
he may be down here next year. Could be the first Husker quarterback in the new system out of the state of Nebraska. Give up the middle to McClay, and McClay from the 44 to the 43, a one-yard gain. Well, at six foot four, he can really see over the offensive line. I was watching him in warm-ups. He does have a nice arm. He throws a nice ball, nice spiral. He's 195 pounds. He could come down here, put on 10, 15 pounds, and you know he's got the mind for it, even though they don't pass the ball a whole lot here. He could learn the system. He's a smart kid. And so we might see him down here in Lincoln. That'd be interesting. 227 and counting remaining fourth quarter. 21-0 Creighton Prep. McClay stumbles forward to the 38-yard line. Five-yard pickup for Mike McClay. And Creighton Prep just about to put the icing on this one and win themselves the state championship. Matthew Foley in at right guard for the Junior Jays right now. They're going to try to get some additional personnel into the ballgame, give them this championship game experience. Still a lot of the uh, first-teamers in there, but Foley in at the right guard. Third down four from the 38-yard line. 148 to play. McClay again. And McClay stacked up short of the first down. In fact, stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down for Creighton Prep. And Miller North will just let the clock continue to run. At this point, down 21. Even if you use the timeout, there's just not much chance of getting back into this one. No, there's not. And Creighton Prep's going to go ahead and run a play here. Turn the ball over on downs if they don't get the first down here instead of punting the football. Fourth down and three. Again, the give to McClay. Big hit. McClay shoved back. Nice play as Miller North coming through. Jacob Wolf in there on the stop for the Mustangs, and they turn away Creighton Prep. Those guys are playing for a lot of pride. They're certainly proud of their school and their accomplishment to get to this state championship game. It shows on plays like that. You always like Absolutely. to see that. You bet. Jacob Wolf, uh, never say die. He's in there till the last second goes off that clock. He's a junior at 6'2", and came in and made a great hit on that last play. And right now, the prep defense is going to talk it over with their head coach and their defensive people. And uh, one thing that we should add right now is, you know, this is a shutout for the prep defense, too. And that's another feather in the prep bonnet here tonight. Although we've got 59 seconds left, so. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Could run a fullback trap. Prep with Gets three shutouts this year, guys. Looking for number four. The three prior to this, the shutouts for Creighton Prep came against Lincoln Southeast in game number one, Omaha South and Omaha Benson. I'm guessing, I'm just guessing now that this shutout will resonate a little sweeter for this Creighton Prep defense if they get the shutout in the state championship game. Kevin, no doubt about that. It, uh, in a game this big, uh, the magnitude of what we're talking about here, and Tom Jaworski, all the years he's uh, coached and the number of times he's been here to get a shutout in the final game, if they get it, 59 seconds left is all that separates uh, the team from the shutout. It'll be uh, just a great big achievement for the, for the uh, defense here. First down and 10 from the 40. The give to Coleman, DJ Coleman into the secondary. He's got a first down out to midfield for Miller North. Coleman now over 100 yards on the evening. So a nice debut into the state championship game for DJ Coleman as he gets 10 yards. Somebody just get a bath down there. Somebody got a bath. <laughs> and there's another one tough. for Coach Jaworski. <laughs> he got it. Not at all unhappy about it either. He'd like to have nine more of those if he could. Nine more showers. From midfield, Coleman gets the carry. Across the 45 down to the 42-yard line. Tackle made by Paul Sutko. As great prep starting to bring in some of the reserves to give them a taste of action. A, fl a flag is down. A personal foul. A personal foul and an ejection, yeah. I believe. Ejection number 69. Saw the uh, Ori Shilato, I believe, is the guy that heads to the sidelines at the end of that play. Dead ball, personal foul. And Shilato out of the ball game. 
undoing the tape, shaking his head. A little frustration, obviously, at the end of this one on the Millard North side. Thank you. And Fred, Fred Petito, not happy about it either. What a year he's had, though. What a year his team has had. Three and six uh, going into the playoffs. They qualified. Come back and win three against teams that beat you earlier. That's just remarkable in and of itself right there. It's so tough to beat a team. But, uh, wow, what a great job he's done uh, this year to pull it all back together. Second down and long. Coleman the carry again. Coleman across midfield. Breaks a tackle down the sidelines. Coleman's got great speed. He's going to take it to the house. Touchdown. The shutout gone with seven seconds remaining. No flags on the play. D.J. Coleman into the end zone for the fourth <laughs> time this year. Amazing. Just amazing stuff. You know, I guess you're not supposed to talk about shutouts till they're in <laughs> like no hitters, but uh, that would seem to be there. But Coleman, they brought him up for the speed, and he used it right there. Great effort. Never say that. Wow, long run there. Add to his stats a little bit here. Not going to make him feel any better when the game's over, but probably not a good feeling for the Creighton Prep defense to give up one right there at the end. They would have liked to have well, a shutout, had, I'm sure. They had a few. Uh, point is good. Seven seconds remaining. Let's watch this run yeah. again. This is, this is a future star of the Millard North running game. They're probably going against a couple of the uh, second and third teamers there also. And there's a missed tackle right there. That was number 88, uh, as you see for Craig Prep, Nicholas uh, Naval. And then just a lot of speed from Coleman to the end. And he dives into the end zone to make himself a little bit of a flourish. <laughs> so DJ Coleman, the sophomore, still having some fun. A little smile on his face as he gets some congratulations from his teammates saying, hey, DJ, nice job. Way to get into the end zone, break up the shutout. Build on next year because DJ's got a lot of football left for Millard North. He does. A bright career with that speed. He'll learn how to handle the ball just a little bit better, hang on to the football and put it away on runs. And uh, he'll do a great job for Millard North. Millard North going to try the onside here with seven seconds remaining. <laughs> You'd say in this situation, well, you never know. But boy, with seven seconds and down two touchdowns, I'm not sure how they would come back. But why not try? Onside kick, bounces up and covered at the 49-yard line for Creighton Prep. Good work, good hands from David Carlisle to cover that football. And with six seconds to go, Prep will just need to snap one time. And that should just about do it. Dewey Kennison in now at quarterback for Creighton Prep. Kennison looking to the sidelines for the play. Tom Jaworski saying, I'm wet and cold. Call what you'd like. Let's just get her done. <laughs> get her done. Midfield stripe, first down and 10. Back to the eye. Kennison backs up, and he'll take a knee. Holds the ball in the air. And that is your ball game. Your Class A state champions for the ninth time. A state record, Creighton Prep, 21 to 7 the win over Miller North. Fred Petito, third straight year. They've made it to the title game. Congratulations to Miller North, but congratulations to Tom Jaworski and Creighton Prep. They're your champions, 12 and 1 on the year. They beat Miller North twice this season. The second time wins of the title. They really played the game the right way tonight, guys. Very physical football team, Creighton Prep. Defensively, they, they tackled the football well. They pursued to the ball well. And offensively, they were strong up front. They ran the ball hard. Andy Keith had a great night. Congratulations to Creighton Prep. A celebration beginning. And it'll last all weekend long, at least, for Creighton Prep. The champions tonight of Class A. We've got the awards presentation coming up next. Great prep, your Class A state champs. 21-7 the final. Nebraska is the only state served completely by publicly owned power. That means our success isn't determined by how well we serve stockholders, but by how well we serve fellow Nebraskans. It means Nebraskans working 24 hours a day 
to provide uninterrupted service and affordable electric rates to other Nebraskans. Always there when you need us. NPPD, together with your local public power utility. Programming is provided in part by Education Quest Foundation. For over 15 years, Education Quest has offered free college planning services. These services include scholarship searches, student loan information, college selection, and help with completing financial aid application. Education Quest is located in Kearney, Lincoln, and Omaha. Appointments are available at 800-666-3721. Brian LGH West is bringing advanced neuroscience technology to Nebraska, offering the state's first gamma knife radio surgery to non-invasively treat brain tumors and severe facial pain, and working with Nebraska's only physician specially trained in coiling for brain aneurysms. Just two examples of our commitment to neuroscience care for Nebraskans and our neighbors. Brian LGH, the first name in healthcare. I'm Tom Osborne, and Nebraska pride goes way beyond the football field. I'm proud to say that NETV is celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is NETV and NETV Digital Television, celebrating 50 years of service to Nebraska. TV sports coverage of the 2004 Nebraska State High School Football Championships are brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us. By Brian LGH Medical Center, the first name in healthcare. By the Nebraska Soybean Board, promoting soy biodiesel fuel, clean burning and renewable, making a difference for soybean farmers and you. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, community grants, and college planning services. 21-7 Creighton Prep with the victory over Millard North tonight. The Class A champions are the Creighton Prep Junior Day Jays. They finish at 12-1. Millard North finishes the season at 6-7 after losing here in the Class A state championship. The awards presentation is coming up, and let's go to our public address announcer, Chris Lofgren for the Class A Awards presentation. The Nebraska School Activities Association is happy to present medals and trophies for both these outstanding teams. The award presentations will be made by NSAA Board of Control members, Dr. Bob Resnick of Omaha West High and U.S. Bank Representative Dolores Tarraway. Here are the awards for Class A runner-up, Millard North. Will head coach Fred Petito and your assistants please come to the sideline stage to present the silver medals to the members of your team. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number one, Chago Harvey. Number two, Daniel Knight. Number three, Jermaine Foster. Number five, Robert Knight. Number six, Zeb Adams. Number seven, Nathan Sell. Number eight, Michael Porl. Number nine, Daniel Henkins. Number 10, Nathan Hiller. Number 11, Nicholas Argyle. Number 12, Jacob Finnecum. Number 13, Austin Williams. Number 15, Andrew Pettinger. 
Number 18, Tyler Tran. Number 19, Jeffrey Tarpinian. Number 20, David Hofek. Number 21, Matthew Hansen. Number 22, James Conway. Number 23, Matthew Clark. Number 24, Tyler Wegman. Number 25, Paul Homer. Number 27, Timothy Week. Number 29, Seth Wolf. Number 30, Henry Kelp. Number 31, Brett Guderian. Number 32, Derek Beer. Number 33, Kenneth Safer. Number 34, Jacob Barrett. Number 40, Sean Fisher. Number 41, Brett Bible. Number 42, DJ Coleman. Number 43, Kyle Crump. Number 44, AJ Mitch. Number 45, Travis Hope. Number 47, Chip Letty. Number 49, David Thorson. Number 51, Michael Caputo. Number 54, Andrew Heflin. Number 55, Mitchell Smolin. Number 56, John Villata. Number 57, Grant Hayek. Number 58, Sean McCardle. Number 59, Jared Barrett. Number 60, Eric Johnson. Number 64, Peter Botkin. Number 65, Danny Wager. Number 66, Timothy Colberetti. Number 67, Jarrett Donahue. Number 68, Ryan Owens. Number 69, Corey Shalito. Number 72, TJ Batten. Number 72, Mitchell Chitwood. Number 74, John Colby. Number 75, Brian Thorson. Number 76, Nate Fair. Number 77, Tyler Fritz. 
Number 78, Adam Nelson. Number 79, Tyler Barton. Number 80, Jordan Farrell. Number 84, Michael Brooks. Number 88, Jason Case. Number 89, Andrew Dennis. Number 91, Camden Arnold. Number 97, Nolan Cohn. Number 98, Jacob Wolf. And here is the 2004 Class A runner-up trophy. Congratulations, Miller North High School. Well, certainly a disappointing finish to a great run through the playoffs for Millard North, but a real accomplishment just to get to this Class A state championship for a third straight year. Kevin, you, you bet uh, they really had some problems early in the year, got those resolved, and came back and beat everybody in the playoffs that they lost to. Well, three of the teams they lost to in the regular season. And uh, Fred Petito said, you know, I really felt good about our team. We wanted to go undefeated in November. They almost got it done here. They just took 14 points short. A great prep here in the final game. But Fred Petito and his gang, great year. You know, we were looking at their people uh, taking the medals and whatnot and uh, looking at next year and the year after. And they're going to be loaded again next year, Kevin. So we'll expect to see them somewhere close to the finals, if not in the finals, next year again. Kind of a coming out party tonight for sophomore running back D.J. Coleman. 26 carries, 182 yards, and a touchdown, Matt. He'll be back next season and a chance to see what Miller North can do. I bet you they'll be back not in the too distant uh, in the not too distant future here in this class a state championship game let's go back to chris lofgren to crown the champions from creighton prep now to the now champions to the from omaha from creighton, omaha prep, creighton high prep, school. prep high school first head coach, head coach tom jaworski we have a special have award a special for you for you now, Coach, would you and your assistants hand out the gold medal to the members of your championship team? Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number eight, Dewey Kennison. Number nine, Michael Stillmont. Number 10, Joshua Perot. Number 10, Number 10, David, David Haysbrook. Haysbrook. Number 11, Tommy Reaver. Number 12, Marquise Spencer. Number 12, Tyler Dare. Congratulations, Tyler. Number 14, Kyle Key. Number 50, Daniel Jorski. Number 20, Michael McClay. Number 22, Anthony Salcido. Number 23, Mark Wary. Number 25, Ryan Fizikaro. Number 26, Chip Latka. Number 27, Paul Shutuko. Number 28, Peter Nobleman. Number 30, Matthew McGinn. Number 30, Mark McDonald. Number 31, Trent Owens. Number 32, Nicholas Meyer. Number 33, 
Number 33, Andy Keith. Number 35, Cameron LaFleur. Hey, Cameron, way to go. Number 40, Gregory Esposito. Good job, Greg. Congratulations, Dave. Number 43, Thomas Yulman. Congratulations, Thomas. Good job, partner. Number 44, Taylor Carter. Taylor, good job, partner. Great coach you've been. Number 45, Eric Grucock. Congratulations, Eric. Next year, too. Let's go. Number 50, Drew Hansen. Another 50, you take that Matthew Coley. Coley. Number 52, Kenyon Chivel. Number 53, Craig Parrott. Number 54, Alexander Post. Alex, congratulations. Nice job, Dave. Number 60, Kevin Ayler. Number 62, Stephen Costello. Number 63, Garrett Ray. Number 64, Sean Jimerson. Number 65, Michael Brown. Number 66, Matthew Kuyper. Number 67, Matthew Ewan. Number 68, Greg Williams. Number 71, Paul Shea. Number 71, Malachi Sullivan. Number 72, Jake McClay. Number 73, Jake Moore. Number 74, Richard Simon. Number 75, David Turk. Number 76, Timothy Leiferman. Number 77, Joel Peterson. Number 78, Jeffrey McGill. Number 80, Anthony Turk. Number 80, John Bruckner. Number 82, Daniel Glassman. Number 83, David Carlisle. Number 84, John Spalick. Number 84, Joseph Alvin. Number 86, Thomas Kinsella. Number 87, Zachary Potter. Number 88, Nicholas Nivoli. Number 90, Scott Etch. Number 92, Jason Jewell. Number 94, Daniel Harmon. Number 95, Scott Gordon. And now, for these outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 2004 Class A State Football Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Omaha Creighton Prep High School. There are the champions, the Creighton Prep Junior Jays, the champs of Class A for the ninth time in school history.
and the first time since 1999. And I would say they have erased the memories of that 38-7 loss to Miller North last year. No doubt about it, Kevin. Uh, a lot of smiles. It's just great to see the smiles on the face of the players and the coaches as Tom Jaworski gave out those medals along with his assistant coaches. Tom Jaworski, 33 years, head coach at Creighton Prep, and uh, I'll guarantee you that, you know, this, this is a nighttime he's done it, Kevin, but He's just as happy today as he was with that first one. Just a tremendous achievement for Tom and his staff and all the kids that go through uh, Creighton Prep. Larry Putney is standing by down on the sideline. He's got Tom Jaworski with him. Well, Tom, first of all, congratulations. Just talk about what these seniors have done, especially, you know, four of them who played as sophomores and having not won a state championship and finally getting in their final game. Well, this senior class has been special. Uh, they've been outstanding football players. As we go through their freshman JV, then the two uh, junior seniors, they've lost two games as a class. Uh, some of the kids were started as sophomores, we lost a few more games, but the, these seniors have been outstanding. It's been fabulous. Uh, it's been a great run. I enjoyed every minute of coaching them, and uh, you know, I'm excited and proud. You really controlled this game. Yeah, I thought we did. I mean, they moved the ball and uh, got some yardage on us and, and ended up with more yards. Of course, some of that was that long run at the end of the game. But we did what we wanted to do. We shut them down, controlled them on, with our defense, Lynn Groff, and they ju he just did a great job and our kids up front. And then our lines on both sides of the ball played well. And the little quick hitters and traps off tackled Andy and up the middle were, were obviously big plays for us. This is Prep's ninth state championship. You've been there for all of them. How, how many more you got in you? My wife says I got to keep working. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll just uh, savor this one and plan for next year. I know I'll be working, so and I love coaching, so this has been fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We're going to grab Zach Potter and also uh, Jake McClates here. Jake, pop it over here real quick. You gave a very impassioned speech before the game in the locker room. Uh, talk a little bit about how you, I mean, you've been the motivational leader for this team, how you got these guys going. Oh. Uh, they get themselves going. I mean, I just seem to say the right things to get them that twinkle in their eye. Uh, it just sort of is a spur of the moment thing. Whatever's on my mind, I let go. I have that kind of quality about me. <laughs> How special has this senior class been? I mean, you know, you talked about the four guys you've had who, you know, started as sophomores, and you guys really sat down when you started and said you wanted to win a state title. Talk about this senior class. Uh, this senior class has been through the thick and the thin. I mean, we've been through it for, I mean, all four years. Most of these guys haven't left the same team. So uh, we really came together this year, and we were a senior-dominated team, but we did well. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to grab Zach real quick. Zach, you'll be not here playing next year. This yes, is maybe a preview of your success to come. I hope so. I mean, I hope we can have the success like this next year. we got a great class coming in, and hopefully we can do it. Talk about how, how you guys dominated that line of scrimmage and really controlled that very potent offense. Our coaches prepared us all week, and they did a great job, and our guys just came ready to play tonight. and We, uh, we were just a better team tonight, I think. You talked a lot about 38-7. How much did that have to do with this? I don't know. It was. <laughs> it had quite a bit, actually. I mean, it was good to beat them down here this year, especially on them. So uh, we're great. It's just too bad it took us four years to get a state championship. Congratulations. Thank you. He started, he started to come up with a reason why 38-7 didn't have much to do with it, but then you saw the smile from Zach Potter, and he realized, you know what, I'm not going to lie. 38-7 was the driving force behind this thing. I said, I'm going to go ahead and admit it right now. Yeah, we did have a lot of motivation, but you can tell these guys really like to play for their coach, Tom Jaworski. What a great guy he is. They really win the right way. Congratulations to them. If you'd like to order a VHS copy or DVD of today's game or any of our state championship coverage, you can log on to the Internet, mynptv.org, or call 1-800-228-4630, NETV. Nebraska's home for sports and Nebraska's home for the state high school football championships. Coming up tomorrow morning, we move on. Two more champions still to crown in the state high school football playoffs. And tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Central Time, it's the Class C-1 championship, Norfolk Catholic against Boone Central. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Time on NETV Sports. Once again, our final score tonight, Creighton Prep 21, Miller North 7. Matt Davison, it's been fun working with you. We sure appreciate you joining us. You're out of here now. It's great to be here. I appreciate Matt. that. And you'll have to work with my sidekick tomorrow. I hope he does a good job. I see you every Saturday. Good job, Matt. Uh, good to be with you. <laughs> see you it's next fun. Friday. You bet. Uh, Scott Frost will join us tomorrow for coverage on Saturday. So be with us tomorrow at 11 a.m. for the Class C-1 championship game, Norfolk Catholic and Boone Central. Now for Adrian Fiala, Matt Davison, Larry Putney, and the entire NETV sports production crew, I'm Kevin Kugler. See you tomorrow morning right here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska.